Hey, what's up, everyone? What's up, everybody? How's it going? It's Sunday night, which means it's time to wind down your weekend with Bat City Comic Professionals. I am Shannon, a.k.a. Small Fresh Ann, and with me is not Wednesday Phil. It's Everyday Matt. Everyday Matt. Everyday Matt, because he's here every day. You see him all the time. Um, But if you haven't seen our live stream with Madeline before, this is my wonderful husband and a dude behind this counter every time you come to Bat City. Co-owners of this shop. Yes. Co-owners of this shop. Shannon does all the new comics. I do all the old comics, cleaning and pressing, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Yeah, happy to be here. I am here because... It's going to happen. We're going to do it. You're going to hate us. I don't care. Today's it's, Phil's birthday. It's Wednesday, Phil's birthday. Yay. We happy birthday. You, happy birthday, Wednesday, Phil. We love you. Uh, you know, enjoy your night off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Enjoy your birthday. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yes. Um, yeah. We what? went out with Phil last night. It was a good time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's good to see Phil. Absolutely. What are we drinking? Oh, man. Yeah. So this is Photograph. And it's a Pinot Noir. Which, Ooh, which is your favorite. I love Pinot Noir. Well, Tempranillos are my favorite, but normally, I mean, if I'm just going to go out and grab a glass of wine somewhere, usually they don't have a Tempranillo. Um, so I prefer to drink Pinot Noirs when I'm out. I think that they're a little bit darker, um, a little bit more. Sorry. So I guess I should jump in here really quick. We should say this really fast. Yeah. I, normally, when you watch this show, I have an iPad and I control all of the shots and all the zooms and everything. So I'm going to be controlling that tonight uh, and also holding the books like our Vanna White Wednesday Phil. So bear with me while I try and do both at the same time. It kind of takes an octopus, but you know, I'll get there. I could be an octopus. (laughs) Yeah. I like that. I mean, I can hold the books if you need me to. You just let me know. We'll figure it out. You're so good at talking about all this stuff. But anyway, Wednesday Wednesday Phil, so this is the new Nickelback wine, right? Ooh, the new Nickelback wine. (laughs) No. This is the photograph. (laughs) Chickens full of wine. I don't know. (laughs) Where is it from? I always like to know where wines are from, and I I didn't get to read where this is from, and I'm Central Coast. Central Coast of what? Uh, we'll find out, I guess. Central uh, Coast. Central Coast. The Central, Central Coast, Coast of, of I was like, I, don't, uh, I still don't know. California, I guess. Um, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Let's see what it tastes like. Yeah. It's very light. It's very light for very a light for the Pinot Noir. Fruity. It's very fruity. Very fruity. It still has kind of the, the dryness mm-hmm. of Pinot Noir. Right. But it's a little sweeter than a normal noir. Yeah, it's not very, it's not very, uh, it's not as dry as a noir. And doesn't have that bitter taste. We find we finally found a noir that Phil actually would have probably enjoyed. Yeah, you might have liked this. <laughs> it does have a, a little burn on the back of the tongue. A little bit, not much. Not you know, much. we're not, we're not necessarily wine connoisseurs. We're comic book connoisseurs. Mm-hmm. So we do the best that we can. We just drink a bottle of wine here every week with this live stream. Yeah. So we've had a lot of wine. Yeah. We try to know what we're talking about when we talk about it. It's oaky. Is it? I don't know if it's oaky or not. It tastes oaky. It's not that oaky. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of, like you said, it's kind of tastes sweet. It kind of tastes a little sweet for Pinot Noir. But yeah. I it's would, a nice, it almost tastes like a red blend. Yeah, it's a little more, it's a little darker than a regular red blend. Mm-hmm. Not as fruity as a red blend, but if you were to just take a red blend and kind of dial all those tones back a little bit, I think it would be really good with like meat maybe, yeah. like a meat, potatoes, and broccoli kind of a I dinner. Can, I can see that. You know, yeah. rather than like sushi. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'd which probably, most Pinot Noirs are good with sushi. I usually really enjoy them with mm-hmm. sushi. Because sushi has all those flavors to begin with, and usually a Pinot Noir is kind of like, a little bit bitter and a little bit drier, so it kind of balances. Yeah, marries out. well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like if I'm eating a really sweet dish, I don't want to have a really sweet wine paired with it, you know. Um, but if you're having a really savory kind of a dish, this might actually be a good wine to go with that. Yeah. Rather than getting a traditional Pinot Noir, because then you have a lot of savory mm-hmm. and this is more, it's a little more airy. Yeah, I think if I was going to have some kind of a dinner. This would be a good. This would be a good one. And a, a neutral. Yeah. A, a neutral wine, too. I feel like this is one of those, like, like I might serve this at Thanksgiving kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And it's a little, I mean, it's definitely a wine's wine. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. It's not It's not like a, a box no. wine where it's really accessible. Yeah. It's still like, oh, this is a nice wine. But yeah, something that's uh, in a good price point. I think this is like, what, 
ten ninety nine something or something, like twelve ninety nine. It's one of those. It's not a crazy expensive wine, but like Shannon said, something maybe you'd want to serve at Thanksgiving dinner or something like that. Yeah. I'd really enjoy it at Thanksgiving. It'd probably be pretty good. Well, we'll so, consider that. I mean, honestly, you might even go a little sweeter because yeah. you have all the gravies and things true, like that true, with your true. Thanksgiving dinner. You might want to have well, a sweetness. Well, we won't, so. Right, we don't. <laughs> and, and honestly, if you're a big cranberry sauce person, this might be a good wine for that. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This, this would it. be good for cran- – honestly, like, if you had, like, the orange cranberry, like, muffins. Yeah. And this, that would Ooh, be a, yeah, a good that, pairing. That would be kind of nice because it's not too sweet. It's not too – Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's good for that. So – You take this. Okay. Um, okay. Because you have this – I have the – Hey, you got to – I, I got to be Phil tonight, so you right. got to direct me and all the Phil – I know. Phil does this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Kind of situation. Thanks for watching tonight, you guys. Yes. Uh, thanks, thanks everybody who's tuning in. Thanks for everybody who's dropping those birthday wishes for Wednesday Phil in the comments. I'm sure he appreciates it. Absolutely. Um, and we've got, we don't have a lot, a lot of comics this week. It's kind of a light week. Are we doing news first? I was going to say, do, but so, right. yeah. yeah. So, but we, yeah. I didn't know if um, you were going right in. No, I was going to say, we don't have a lot of comics, but we do have a lot of events and things coming up. Yeah, so we, a lot we can of take events. some time to talk about them. Um, sure, while everybody's here. Yeah, while you're all here. Uh, we've got, you know, we had Superhero Storytime this last weekend. Mm-hmm. That is going to be the second Saturday of every month. Yeah. Um, and then also the Thursday following we'll have one. And we're testing it in the morning, and then we'll test it in the afternoon and see which one's uh, a better fit. Yeah. We've got uh, in-house workshops coming up next weekend. So if you've got kids either age 6 to 12 or age 13 to 19, that would like to participate in a workshop. We've got a morning one for the the, the younger kids and an afternoon one for those teenagers. Uh, they're free at our shop, and they will be making their own comics and learning how to write uh, and apply those writing skills towards making comic books. Um, and then... And we're going to have a guest educator in-house. We will have a guest educator mm-hmm. working with us. Um, our, I guess we can say it, too, our new curriculum volunteer curriculum coordinator yeah uh zach seppelman super excited to have that fantastic you guys might have known zach if you guys came to the shop sometimes in austin zach come in a couple of times a year and uh relentlessly through all of our bins he's a huge (laughs) comic collector um he's got a fantastic comic book collection we always like to talk about all that stuff but he is really tied in as an educator and a fantastic curriculum developer which is really cool yes he will be here. He'll be here uh, Friday through Tuesday. So I'm excited to have some time with Zach to yeah. make some new uh, workshop, workshops, make some new curriculum, and also to have Zach participate in these workshops with us. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited to have Zach around for that. Yeah. Uh, and if you guys are here for the workshops, you guys get to meet him too. He's fantastic. Yeah. Great with kids. Absolutely. Um, and then the next weekend is Batastic Halloween. Yes. Uh, you know, you might know there's usually like a Halloween Comic Fest. This year, Halloween Comic Fest is digital. Um, but there is a, a lot of uh, comics that are still available for free this year. And so we're, we're Batastic Halloweening it. And we've got... Yeah. And there's nine free titles. Six free titles, Six free titles. Dude, there are some really cool ones. I've already looked over the Spidey issue. It's Spide- very cool. Oh, yes. Perfect um, for those love that little show. ones. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and then there's some Spidey for adults, too, because there's Amazing Spider-Man with that Red Goblin, or Goblin Queen Ooh, story. Oh, yeah. Uh, not Very the Red cool. Goblin, the Goblin Queen story. And then uh, there's some Godzilla. There's uh, some some really, uh, Dr. Afra. There's some great titles, yeah. like you said. So we'll be handing those out. We'll also have candy. Um, if you want to come trick-or-treat, essentially, you can stop by and get some free candy. We're going to have face painting. We're going to have a spooky story time. Um, we're going to have uh, Mez Comics and Games is going to be out. Mez is one, a local store here in Bridgeton that does an exceptional job with cards. They've got so many Pokemon um, and all any card game that you could be. Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic. Yes. They do drafts. They do tournaments at their thing. If you guys are into that sort of thing, you got to check out Mez. Very, very, very friendly people. Yes. You know, um, As you guys know, we try and keep the friendliness and the community that's a big part of what we do here and try and make everybody our buddy mez does the exact same thing he's fantastic people and uh they're gonna be out here they're gonna have some pokemon cards they're gonna be out here with pokemon. and stuff mm-hmm. yeah it's gonna be very cool uh they're not they're comics and games but they mostly just do uh cards and that's kind of their main thing in tcgs and stuff like that yeah. we mostly do comics 
they're awesome and we love those guys We're super so much. excited to partner so, with them yeah absolutely yeah so there's a lot of really cool things and i think there was a there was something else something something else was happening at fantastic halloween this year i'm gonna cry um what, i'm gonna cry what was it do you want to tell them do you want me to tell them i want you to tell them uh, if you guys know my favorite series in the entire world, if you've ever talked to me ever, is Bunny Mask, which I'm wearing the shirt right now. And I can't, I, I can't even say it. Andrea Moody, the artist of Bunny Mask, who did this design right here, is going to be here signing yes, in shop. Yes, yes. Which we're so excited about. Oh my goodness. He's, yes. Oh, uh, we're so super stoked. We got called two days ago. We... Yes, we're just so excited. Yeah, it's just I can't talk shit. It's it's super new. We just Don't look uh, at we got a <laughs> we just we just got a phone call uh, two days ago and shout out to Carrie uh, with SunCoast Comic Con. Yeah, uh, for okay. for hooking that up for us. We're super excited. Um, it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be amazing. We like jumped around and screamed for a, a while. Um, I'm so, <laughs> with, so so excited. If you guys know me, I'm a huge Money Mask fan. I have the costume, you know, and Money Mask might make an appearance. Just saying, uh, I have like I don't know five, six, nine eights Money Mask variant covers and all kinds of stuff. One in tens. I collect it hard. I love 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 Money Mask. And it's spooky season. We're gonna be talking about a lot of spooky books tonight. Um, a great spooky read this season is Bunny Mask, so I definitely recommend if you're coming out to Halloween Comic Fest, pick up a trade of that book or even just the issue one. We're going to have lots of first prints of cover A, which is super cool. Get those signed. Uh, you know, get a get a trade paperback signed for you because it's going to be a story that you love. It's kind of like uh, what if the girl from The Ring was a superhero and your best friend. It's a great concept for a comic book. It's awesome. The art is amazing. And if you're not a Bunny Mask fan or if you haven't jumped in yet, yeah. their Maniac of New York is another huge series uh, that you could jump in on. And that is basically what if Jason had actually taken Manhattan. Yep. Uh, and we are actually see following along as the Maniac, uh, Harry, I believe mm -hmm. they call him, uh, is actually going through each of the boroughs and kind of getting that slasher film in every single borough of New York. It's uh, a slasher film as a comic book. If you've ever just wanted a slasher film as a comic, that's your book. That's the one. It, and it's fantastic. It's so good. And there's been two volumes already and there's more to come. And it's super exciting. It's so exciting. And there have been two volumes of Bunny Mask. Each of those is each four issues. So mm -hmm. there's really only been eight issues of each of those books out. That said, he's also done Parasomnia with Cullen Bunn, mm -hmm. um, is his other big one. It's Brit and British, and Paranormal, British Paranormal, Society. Paranormal Society. And there is, if you've been collecting this image, 30th anniversary, he does also have a story in there also with Cullen Bunn. Yeah. No, that one's with Jeff Johns. Is it with Jeff it's Johns? It's with Jeff Johns, Holy I think. Uh, but um, yeah, he's got a story in there that he's been doing the art on. And yeah. so it, and another great like horror slasher kind of story. So if you, love horror this is this is your artist to meet and a book that came out this week that we're going to be talking about maybe yeah yeah we got it we got it oh in here. We've, we've, we've got one we've and got we're going to be talking about one the one copy, copy and i'm going to be hoping bought to order it like more. crazy yeah yeah and so we'll be showing andrea's art tonight it's incredible honestly one of my favorite favorite artists who's out right now um just unbelievable very watercolory splashy kind of stuff and yeah Unbelievable. So excited. So super excited. Um, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I I've cried. I've cried for two days now. We've been freaking out. We've been waiting until this moment to share it with you guys. Yes. Um, all the details for that will be on our pages tomorrow, Tuesday, something like that. In Look out for it. Days. Just know that it's going to be here. And I believe it's 12 to 3, 12 to 3.30 or something. Andrea is going to be here. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be amazing. God, how mean. I know. It's this awesome. Halloween at Bat City has become my favorite time. Yeah. I mean, last year we were honored to have Chris Sheehan as they launch uh, House of Slaughter issue yeah. one. And I mean, and just to have all of our, uh, the autumnal books, like, available. The autumnal is one of our absolute favorite comics. And we were so blessed to have Chris last year, which was amazing. And what a beautiful human. Yeah. Chris is fantastic. Fantastic human being. Fantastic oh my gosh. human being. If you ever have a chance to meet Chris, then just take it and yeah. just be like blessed. In buy your... Chris's stuff. Yeah. See Chris's name on something, just buy it. Just buy it. Uh, and that said, like, 
don't forget to tell your LCS whatever store that is, S or whoever, that you want a copy of Specs by tomorrow because that's Chris's new book with David Boer, and that order is up tomorrow. So Ooh. if you are a Chris Sheehan fan. Very exciting. Right. Phil's calling it now. Halloween Comic Fest 2023. 2023. Marco, Marco Montanelli. Like, honestly, that would be I, the holy trinity of I, artists for me because Chris and Andrea and Marco, you would, those are my three favorite artists. You would die. Said, Andrea's one of them. Those are the other two. <laughs> and, you know, right. absolutely. Like the coolest artist right now in comics. And we're about to have the second one. I am completely dying. And Marco's always in our stream here. And mm-hmm. we love you, Marco. And, yes. So, you, you know. know. So exciting. So exciting. This is so much fun. We have comics. We have comics. I'm sorry to throw all this on you guys. <laughs> no. I need wine. Right. Throw it on them. Throw it on them. Uh, all right. So we have some comics this week that are out. Um, and like I said, it's not a very big week, but I am very excited about a lot of the books that are out. So um, up first from Scout Comics is issue three of Mega Centurions. Mega Centurions. And uh, this is one of those books that I feel like you kind of, miss over it really easily and I think that you are missing out on something really cool um honestly like for fans of things like Radiant Black I think this is another one that you should be picking up because these are three superheroes who they they did their job you know they were trained to be superheroes they were trained to have all these powers and skills and then they did their job they saved the day and then the government that sponsored them becoming these superheroes and giving them all of these skills and powers just kind of abandoned them, just forgot about them. Um, they suddenly, they, the powers were stripped. They had no none of no access to anything. They didn't have jobs anymore. And so now they're all kind of like working wherever. One works at a, at a gas station. One works as like a cook, I believe, somewhere. But they all just have these ordinary jobs and they're just trying to make ends meet. And it's like, hey, remember when we were superheroes? Yeah, it's good times. Like, but now this is what we do. Like, I got to go to work. And in the first issue, they're a long time, like one of their long time rivals, the super villain from an alien planet shows up and is like, hey, I'm actually not here to fight you. I just wanted you to know that that bad guy that everything buddy thinks y'all destroyed, not dead. And coming to destroy the earth again. And they're like, we can't do anything about it. The government doesn't care about us. Doesn't get, They took our superpowers. We've got nothing. And she's like, well, you have to do something. And they're like, we can't do anything. And I, I love it in this issue specifically because she's the supervillain is like, you guys, we have to do something. And one of the mega centurions is like, I got to go to work. So just be alien crazy person over here for a hot minute. I'll be back at five when I get off work and we can talk about this. And they're like, the world is going to end. You're going to just go to work. And it's like, hey, world might end, but we don't know. Maybe it's going to end. Maybe it's not going to end. But one thing's for sure. I got to pay my rent next week. And I love how realistic like that is. It's like, hey, I, I live paycheck to paycheck. Like, yeah. I'm not a superhero anymore. So got to live my life. So if you're a fan of, like I said, Radiant Black or any of those superheroes who have real world problems and real world emotions mega centurion is another great one and you're honestly you're getting that like nice team up on the after side i love this so much and this artwork that's awesome it almost looks like chris's stuff it's like chris sheehan and mike allred had a baby yeah and i love it that's dexter dexter we dexter we and created it with john Parrish. did super cool yeah book. super cool book check it out it's only on issue three so there's still time to catch up and and we have one and two so if you haven't jumped in yet and scout and scout so you know you trust it love it's scout be good. love scout love the people they're doing good things yeah speaking of art uh we've got oh, issue four of the first I volume can't of show any of this star stuff. hinge i know the dragon and the boar you can show like this page that's that's about it that maybe there's i think this some of the second i don't know you gotta figure it out as that's, you go that's the only one <laughs> maybe there there's i know Look it's how so gorgeous she is though like, oh, why don't you show that i know you, you can't so, you'd have to like go like that she's so naked she's so, so there's naked. some nudity in this so, Definitely uh, some nudity. Oh, maybe, that's that's maybe cool. Kind of that. Yeah, this is good. So this is the story. It's essentially like what if Merlin was from a future reality and was kind of like a mer person. Like that's where the Merlin came from because he was a mer. But he's like this future being of some sort, space being. 
uh, ends up going back in time to to help with the whole King Arthur thing. Like, we have the Uther Pin Dragon, but at the same time, and it's all, like, related to Stonehenge, and at the same time, we have this girl who's in our time period who's like, hey, I study all this, like, occult stuff, and I've been working really hard to, like, figure out this, what Stonehenge was and what happened with this time period, and ends up going back in time, like, back through all of this herself and I love I love the way the story like parallels because you're almost like wait whose story is this who who where are we at but at the same time it all blends together really nicely and this one kind of gives us the full like Uther Pendragon like saga in like one issue and it's all told from the girl from the future so I love it because it's like if you were just relaying what you saw on a tv show but it's the King Arthur, like the, the Uther Pendragon portion of King Arthur. And she's even like, yeah, so you know that part in the book where they told you like this and this and this happened? Okay, A, that's not what happened. But also, can we just call things what they were? And that was a rape scene and it was not okay. Oh, like, you know, let's talk about te- like history, like historically accepted books as what they are. And I love that it just kind of does it. It's almost like I read half of this issue in Madison from she holds voice <laughs> like or you know it's yeah. just like oh like it's, it's, i just like imagine her like telling me this story anyway uh it's it's fantastic if you are a high fantasy or a high sci-fi person this is going to be a really great blend for you because you're going to get a little bit of both of that in it um you get this really great lamb sharp art and he's doing both sides he is writing and oh really and are, uh, doing the art and everything this is completely lamb sharp on everything and it's such a cool concept and such a great like big story for him to kind of break into this thing and this is one of those where every time I read it, I'm like, this is so much. Like, you look at it, and you're like, there's so much to read. I don't know if I want to read it. It's going to take forever. And then I read it, and I'm like, damn, that was really good. Yeah. Every time. The thing about Liam Sharp is I feel like most of this is painting, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Liam Sharp, if you guys read Batman Reptilian and did the art on that, very, very, very super cool art. And, you know, I just showed that last page. I think, I think we might see Liam Sharp. P and Alex Ross. I think so. Down the line. Like a DC. Liam, like, I don't know how old you are. Prince you know, I don't know how many years yeah. you're going to be working on comics. Please keep working on them. I can totally see, though. Yeah, like you said, yeah. DC prints, like the timeless covers that Alex right, Ross does. I can like, see Liam Mark. Mm-hmm. Sure. I absolutely do. And that's exciting. There's not, there's, we're in such a digital art world, and it's cool seeing painting yeah. back in comics again. Very I'm gonna vertigo. I'm gonna interrupt really yeah. fast because uh, Cameron just jumped in, and I do have to point Cameron, out it's also Cameron's happy birthday. birthday Cameron. Happy birthday, oh Cameron! Uh, we love you, buddy. Yes, miss you. I hope you're doing well. I've got a big stack of comics coming your way soon because you've got the rollover on a month happening. So yeah, you've got your your comics coming, my dude. And happy, happy birthday. birthday! Hope it's been a great day for you. Yes. Yeah, and it's cool that you and Wednesday feel. Share, share, a birthday. share a birthday. Like now, I wish we were all together. I know my original yeah. Wednesday <laughs> Bat City like buddy and yeah. like Wednesday Phil share right. A birthday. That's crazy. So, that's super cool. Um, up next from Image Comics, we have issue two of the least we can do. Um, this is a team that I talk about a lot. This is uh the team that 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 is doing this book is also the team behind Alice in Leatherland and oh, yeah. a thing called Truth and all of those books that I love. And this is essentially them creating a Harry Potter, Steven Universe kind of story where we've got um, a young, a a world where there's these gemstones and if you have a gemstone, you have certain powers. And our main character, I love it in the first issue, she shows up and she's like, tells this long story about why she wants to be a part of their team and why she wants the training and everything. And the whole story at the beginning is just her telling all of this. And you get toward the end, and it's her standing in a room full of people. And she's like, so anyway, that's why I think I should be a part of your team. And they're like, yeah, we didn't need you to tell us the whole history of everything. Like, we we know that. And so I love that they made it seem like we were just getting the story. But then, of course, it's like this girl. It shows us at the same time that she's basically like a word vomit kind of person over all the knowledge she has. Um, and that's her thing. She's one of those book smart, I'm I'm you know, the one that says, let's go to the library. And now she's having to train to fight a war. And she's like, I don't, I don't really want to hurt people. And they're like, well, that's what you do in a war. Like you can't just be the book person in a war. And she's like, but I mean, knowledge is power and it's a great weapon. And they're like, yeah, but you have to actually 
punch somebody and you're hurting people for good. And she's like, I don't think that's a thing. And so she's already got this big conflict going on within herself. And at the same time, she's yet to figure out how to actually use this gemstone power. And we keep learning little tidbits like the you should be able to use your stone immediately and you were supposed to have taken it from someone uh, through some kind of, like they died or through some kind of act where you defeated them or something. And every time anybody talks about those things, she gets really skittish and kind of like backs off. And so we're going to definitely find out some secret information about how she got her stone at some point that's definitely going to have a big play into who she is. But I love this book. I think it's great. They, you know, uh, Lisa and Yolanda have this great character development sense that they do. Um, you always feel like you're on the journey with the character. And they're very, very good at making these likable, enjoyable characters who just an adapt and connect to other people so well. And this is a great thing for a book like that to have because, you know, you've got your... They're, they're not saying chosen one. We're not, we're, as, as far as we know, this girl is not, was not chosen at this point, but she really wants to be, and yet she can't make it work. And so I kind of love this, this girl who just really wants to help. And she just constantly is like, I just want to help people. And they're like, well, then you got to do the hard things. Um, super great story. If you did not pick up issue one, I highly recommend you grab issue one. Um, and issue two and just dive into it. This is one of those series that um, by the time we get to issue three and four, you're going to regret that you're not on it. So, the least we can do. least we can do. And this is from Image. Yes. Image, cool. And it's, it is issue two. Yes. Cool. Um, from AWA Upshot, Ooh. we've got volume two, issue two of Erratic. This nice. is Erratic Recharge. Recharge. Uh, if you have not read Erratic, Erratic is all about a young boy who was affected during the time of the Resistance series, which is when a virus came up and killed 400,000 people. And the people who got the virus and didn't die, some of them got superpowers. And now... They are in this universe that doesn't want to accept them. Um, they call them the Reborns, and they are... There's a lot of people who are really, really against this these super-powered individuals being around, and that seems to be, like, the big focus of where this Resistance universe is going. Um, but Erratic, specifically, is a young boy whose powers are, in fact, erratic. Uh, he only gets 15 minutes, I think it is, of power a day. Um, only... Uh, yeah. Only gets about 15 minutes of power a day, and once it runs out, he cannot use his powers again until he recharges, which sounds like it wouldn't be a problem, except most battles against supervillains last longer than 15 minutes. So he has been struggling with that throughout the first volume, and in volume one, he ended up getting, you know, dating the, the popular girl in school, and uh, she kind of lost her social status and everything for dating the nerdy kid, and all of that, and volume two has started with finding out that something called the, the void is coming for all of them. And he doesn't want to be a superhero anymore, but it looks like if he doesn't do superhero stuff, everybody's gonna die. And a woman shows up, a teenage girl shows up, I should say, that is kind of like a Wonder Woman kind of teenage, like dying, like Wonder Girl, like teenage girl, uh, princess of a different place that nobody's ever heard of, Warrior, and she's... Is that uh, this girl with the white hair? And she's the girl with the white hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, everybody is super intrigued by where she comes from. She's kind of like, do you, uh, in Red Sonia, Vampirella, Betty and Veronica, when that crossover happened, and you put Red Sonia in the high school, it feels very much like that those scenes where Red Sonia was going to high school with Betty and Veronica and Archie and them because she's just so lost and she's arguing with everybody about all the things that should exist that they've never heard of because she's from this like different place entirely and she seems to like erratic she she's from what we're looking at here she's very oh, she's she's his partner essentially she wants to work with him um because she knows how to stop this bad guy that's coming in and they're here to work together and she's just she's just great. I love her. Honestly, yeah. if they wanted to do a spinoff series of just, of just her, I would buy all of the issues. She's fantastic. Um, I love the fish out of water element of it all too. And Erratic's just a fun book. If you like Sideways or if you're a fan of Spider Man, yeah. especially in his younger days, Erratic is a book that you should jump in on. And if you haven't read Volume One, AWA Upshot Trades are nine ninety nine, so it's easy to get in there and check out something you haven't checked out with them before. Age range. Uh, How early do we start? 
Honestly, there's not really anything that you couldn't give to like a nine or a 10 year old in these books so far. The only thing that was kind of adultish themed in the first one is the mom is an alcoholic. And, uh, but she has recovered. And so it's, it's really, it's, it's a good conversation. It's good conversation. It's made for teenagers. This is kind of like if I know AWA has talked, like kicked around like YA imprint words coming, you know, someday. Yeah. Um, but if they had one, this would probably be like their frontliner for it. Yeah. This is very, um, very YA. And I, I honestly think a little bit younger at some points, like a 12 year old would probably really enjoy this book a lot. And we keep it in our kids section. Yeah. So if you're looking for it as an adult, it's in the kids section. And honestly, as an adult, you should be looking for it if you're enjoying Spider-Man. Right. Right. Absolutely. Especially Sideways and things like those. There's a lot of love for Sideways Mm -hmm. out of those DC metal characters. You know, it's like Batman who laughs and then Sideways. You know, we're not really talking about damage or Silencer. Silencer. Yeah. Which Silencer is a cool character too. And Damage is a... You know, make Apocalypse into a, you know... A hero. Into a hero. Doomsday. I was going to say, it was almost like Doomsday, yeah. Apocalypse, and um, Etrigan, like, mixed together. Yeah. Which is what all those metal characters were. They seemed like little compilations of a bunch of other, like, characters. Yeah, in the way that Sideways was kind of like that. But there's a lot of love for Sideways. People yeah. are always kind of looking for it and stuff. But yeah, if you're into that kind of character, right. Erratic's always been a cool, cool book. A great, a great segue from, from Sideways. Yeah. Um, from Image Comics, we've got issue three of Tom King's Love Everlasting. I know. I didn't even realize that this had started. I was like, issue three, when I was looking at what came out today, I'm like, man, I'm already this behind. Yeah. And it I, came, it started when we moved here. And I remember it because it has extremely, and you're going to see it in a second, but extremely Darwin Cook looking art. I it mean, this is just, literally it just looks like looks Darwin, like Cook Darwin back Cook's back art. And I'm going to show that page. Uh, who is the artist on this? It is Elsa... Elsa Char- Charitier? Yeah. Charitier. Uh, and she's killing it. Awesome. Uh, this has been an absolutely fantastic story. So uh, basically, Tom King was probably sitting around at some point in his life and said, has anybody ever noticed that all romance novels seem like they could star the same girl in every single one and that they never end and the plot is kind of the same? What if? A, it was the same girl in every single one. And what if something was chasing her through all of them? And that's why, and so nothing ever worked out. I feel like that's the conversation he had because that's kind of what this series has been so far. And it's the story of a, of a girl who really just wants to find love. And she's been in love with this boy. And every time she gets to the point where they're going to be together, somebody shows up and kills her. And it's the same person that seems to be chasing her through all of these books. And she never gets to make it to the point where she actually finds her happily ever after. And so it's such a cool concept because you get each issue, you get at least one love story that is from in some kind of romance genre. Like you'll get one of the... Uh, you know, oh, we had a Western and now we've had, like, this is the teen love story of the girl who's like, I'm going to move away and go to college. And it's like, no, but I love you and I'm your high school boyfriend. Like, stay with me. Um, and we're ha- we're on this story right now, but we've seen so many of these other, you know, we had the, oh, I fell in love with my roommate's boyfriend, like, drama story. Oh. And so we've had all these different stories, and every time, nothing works for her. Um, so it has been such an interesting concept, and it's Tom King, so I'm going to be completely wrong about all of that and, like, seven more issues. I just told you what the story is about, and I promise you when we get to the end, that's not going to be what this book was about at all because it's Tom King, and he's always shifting it when you get to the end. Yeah. But it's fantastic. If you are a fan of Tom King and you're not reading this, you're missing out. And honestly, I keep talking about how I feel like romance and romantic comedies and comics is just, like, shot is shooting up. Yeah. And I love seeing Tom King jump on that at the very beginning, as he usually does, get in there. And, like, I'm like, great, now, next up, where's my Jeff Lemire, like, romantic comedy? Like, because he usually has, like, the weird twist on it. Um, I'm excited for it. It's great. And we're seeing a lot of people buying Golden Age romance Mm -hmm. books, too. I mean, that's just a thing that's just shooting up in the way that EC Horror comics have always kind of been collectible. The romance kind of stuff has fallen off. You know, if you guys don't know, most comic book writers a lot of comic book writers and artists were women Mm -hmm. back in the day and they 
mostly put them on romance books and things like that. Though a lot of them did do superhero things like that. But a lot, a lot, a lot of the artists and writers were female. And a lot of the people reading comics back pre, even pre-1955, you know, golden age stuff was, it was a primarily female audience, which is super cool. And so they were putting out more romance novels back then and it, or more romance comics. And as time has gone on now, those books have started to become popular again, which is very cool. I love seeing the, the height of those go up, which is awesome. In the same way that we see Tales from the Crypt and things yeah. like that be expensive. We're seeing all of those Golden Age books be expensive. And so it's cool that they're having a resurgence. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I credit a lot of that to the wonderful books that Yolanda and Elisa have been putting out. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice to see Tom King step in and say, hey, you know what? I've been writing all these romance stories for Batman and Catwoman who are two people who can never be together. Yeah. Let's just tell a story about two people who can never get together. Yeah. It's like, dude, we love that. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. It's great to read. It's yeah. awesome. It's so much fun. You should definitely check it out, everybody. Um, up next, from IDW on their original imprint, uh, we've got issue four of Dark Space's Wildfire, uh, which is a book that I have put in the picks of the week almost every single time it's been out. I am absolutely in love with this book. Uh, Scott Snyder on writing and Hayden Sherman on art is a combination that I never knew I always needed. Uh, two people I love individually, so I'm so glad to see them yeah, working wow. together. And this is the story of a group of female prisoners who are in a penitentiary in California. And uh, they are actually, they choose to take the role of fighting fire, uh, wildfires because that's actually a real thing I learned in the course of this book coming out, which I think is fantastic to learn things through comic books all the time. But you can actually, prisoners can actually um, opt to work as firefighters for the wildfires uh, in California. And so these women are all on this team and the story is narrated by the team leader who's like it's my job to protect these girls and kind of like the whole time is telling us about how fires work you know oh this is you know when you're in this situation like this is what this is and she's explaining everything about the fire which is of course the narration for where the story is going to go the whole time and Scott Snyder is excellent at that using narration yeah. to tell you where stories are going um and so the women decide that you know, they're never going to get out and they're always going to be fighting these fires. It's one of those, just like the wildfires, you feel like you can't put them out ever. Their lives in prison is something that they're never going to get through. And one of the girls says, hey, that house over there that we're trying to stop the fires from hitting, I worked for the guy who owned that. And that is where he put all of his money and all his paintings and everything. That's like where all his secret layer was. What if we robbed it Ooh. and we got out of here? And so they Ooh. all make the decision that, yes, they're going to do it. And they come up with their, like, Ocean's Eleven style plan on how they're going to get out. And uh, just like a wildfire, nothing goes the way they think it's going to go. And uh, we're four issues in. Five is going to be the last issue, I believe, that said she'd be concluded at the end of this one. And this is so good. Like, please, somebody give me a movie out of this. This is It flows so well. It's super cinematic because of Hayden German's art, but this it's so good. And again, this is one of those, like, if you are missing this book, you are missing out because this is one of my favorite books on the shelf right now. And we actually have um, a couple of subscribers who actually do put out wildfires for a living, and they both get this book, and they're like, it's actually really cool to see them talk about it and the way it works. Um, and just kind of see these people, like, they've, like, run these teams yeah. before, and so they're like, it's actually really cool to see this book. And yeah. I love that when they take something that, again, didn't even know that that was an option of a career, and these people are... Uh, who actually do this are like, no, it's really cool to see. And they were like, it's really cool to see them do this with a team of female firefighter, like female prisoners working as firefighters, but it's cool the way the analogy and everything works. So awesome story, incredible art. Uh, and, uh, hands down, it's always a pick of the week because I just Scott love it. Scott so Snyder, much. you know, it's worth giving it a try. Absolutely. You know? And especially if we're on issue four, pick it up. Do we have all the issues? Maybe. They are in our water damage box. Ooh. So a lot of our issues did get water damage. I believe they are still available. Yeah. So if you are looking for them, I can always order more. But if you want to try it, they might actually have some crinkly versions in our uh, Hurricane Ian Run These Comics boxes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, up next, from Ablaze Comics, issue three of L's. I've been to read this book. 
I have to dig out the number ones. So if you do want to read this, just know I have to dig out the number ones from the box from when we moved here. Uh, But I love this. If you are a fan of anything Pixar has ever done, you're going to love this book. It is absolutely that level of adorable and emotional. And I cannot wait to see what the big reveal of this story is going to end up being. But this is about a young girl who moves to a new town and you get the cute montage essentially of making friends in the first issue and you get to know all of her group and everybody's great and then one day she just suddenly flips and she becomes completely terrible to everybody and they don't really know what's going on and we see you know she shows up with like pink hair and when she gets angry she suddenly has this blonde hair and she's just mean to everybody. And then she gets sad and she has another color hair. And so basically it's like these different personalities for each emotion that she's feeling. And her friends, of course, are there for her. And she has no idea what's going on. She doesn't know what's happening to her. She just knows this is something that's happened all along. And we're starting to get a little bit here and there of the pieces of the puzzle that are um, coming together as she learns a little bit more and more about her past. And I love that her friends are just, it's like this friend adventure of like, no matter who you are, and they even tell her like, no matter who you are, we don't care. We just, we love you for who you are. And whichever one of you that is like, just know that like, no matter how terrible, like we're going to, we're going to be there to support. Um, very Pixar very message, Pixar. but also Pixar art. Yes. Which is super cool to see. You know, and I just talked a little bit about digital art and digital art being a thing. You know, if you're going to do digital art, do it like this. Yeah, get That's on it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I love this. I love this book so much. And again, if you're looking for IP to pick up and turn into movies and projects, it's right here. It's right here. It's right here. It's already storyboarded for you. It's so good. Yeah. And this is issue three and it's from a Blaze comics. Mm-hmm. Which means it's from another country. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, up next from Image is Seven Sons Part 5. Um, this was the return of Jay Lee to interior art, which I know everybody was really excited about. And this is the story of seven sons, seven guys who were born, who we have, as a society, have been led to believe are the, one of them will end up being the in, reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Uh, he is like the Messiah return. Seventh but, son of the seventh son kind of a thing. Seventh son of the seventh yeah. son. And we don't know. They don't know which one. And they're all being paraded around. And, you know, they all can do different parts of the miracles. And they can all do different things. Um, and, of course, they're all getting killed off. And it's like, oh, well, whichever one makes it, that's obviously the, the Messiah. So it's kind of like the person in charge of them seems to be kind of letting all this happen. But also seems to be... Like, you guys have to stay inside, like, locked up. And they're, the sons are like, why can't we go out? Like, isn't the whole point to be a part of the people? Like, isn't that the whole thing that we're supposed to be here for the people and we're supposed to protect the people and say, and work, work with the people? And he's like, yes, but you can't be a part of that because the people are terrible. And they're like, but isn't that the point? Uh, so it's a really awesome conversation. But you're also getting, like, almost like a Taken-level spy thriller. In the middle of that, because one of the brothers does go out on his own. He answers like a he goes to a club with someone and he gets kidnapped. And in the process of all of that um, is starting to learn that everything he's been told about who he is and who his brothers are might not be true at all. And we're seeing all of that unravel and a new thread of life being uh, redeveloped. It is a really, really cool concept. And um, it's, and look at this paneling. Yeah. I know. I was thinking, oh, man, viewers might be thinking he showed the same page. But no, just like all the panels are like this broken glass kind of a look. Which I love because it's not always like that. And in this issue is the issue where he's had his whole world shattered. Yeah, and Jay Lee made all of the panels look, look like cracked shattered, glass. Right? And it's, it's oh, it's, super cool. There's so much thought that, went, that goes into, as somebody like Jay Lee is such a you know, known artist and he's done so much. It's you can see the art that he's putting into the thought he's putting in behind the art to go with the story. Mm-hmm. And I just I love that. I love when the artists are like, okay, well we're gonna tell this. Like let's make the paneling be a part of the story too. It's yeah. full on medium use. Super cool. Yeah. That's image issue five, right? Mm-hmm. 
And I mean, if it was, I would imagine it's going to be like seven issues or something. Like, well, who knows? It could keep going. But yeah, I, seven I, issues would make sense. Seven, seven issues seven would make sense. Yeah. But I don't know if that's true. You know. Um, up next from Kevin Smith's Secret Stash All Press right. at Dark Horse is Masquerade issue two. Um, honestly, like with issue one, I was like, what are we doing with this Kevin Smith? It's like this vigilante woman who can take your face. Um, and in issue two, we get even more of this this story and not that character we get a lot of universe building and seeing the way the universe was built out in this book um in this particular issue was a really cool thing because this issue for the most part follows a girl who runs one of those gotcha style shows um and her whole thing is she was like i had a terrible childhood people were abusive to me um, men are always terrible. So my whole thing is that I want to expose that. So she dresses up in different kind of situations. She puts herself in different situations to try to catch pedophiles. Oh, my God. And then she kind of beats the crap out of them and gets them arrested. And this whole first two-thirds of this book follows her and her story as she's setting all this up. And then it shifts at one point where we see the vigilante. Like, we're seeing, like, people, yeah, this face technology that people are talking about that our vigilante is using. Um, and then we have been initially like kind of see all these three stories essentially uh, because we are seeing the girl that's doing the gotcha show. And then we're seeing this, this police autopsy of the people from the first issue. And then we see our vigilante and what she's going for um, and who she like, kind of like what she's setting up. And so we're still at that point where this book could go in a thousand different directions and you don't really know which one it's going to take. Uh, but it's really cool to see the way the setup is going. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I'm Honestly, I'm fascinated by this. Just this art and the concepts. I'm like, man, I hate to read this. Yeah. It's all like if you could change your face, like what would you use that power for? Like if you could change, like, you know, it's essentially the conversation at hand. Because even the girl with the gotcha show. Yeah. It's like she changes everything about herself. To, to, like, lure these people in. Yeah. And that's essentially what our vigilante is doing, is she's changing everything about herself, but, like, actually, like, face-off right. technology. Right, 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 face-off so, technology. That's what it seems like. It's super it's cool. fantastic. Yeah. And also killing pedophiles. Always. Yeah, and, always kill pedophiles. Right, and she's, well, she's just, she's getting them arrested, but she's, like, beating the crap out of them. Fantastic. First. It's great. Beat them. Yeah. Let's um... <laughs> We got a bunch of number ones today. <laughs> I'm like, normally you want to talk about politics on this show. I don't think and that's, that's, not, that's politics. not political. It's like you no. abuse children. We're going to beat you. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm like, it, these comics are just, that's not a political comic. That's just comics right. doing what they should right. do. Um, up next, uh, from Image and the Zizergy, Zizergy. Zizergy. Zizergy imprint. Yeah. Um, we've got Hitomi. This is issue one with this cool. Peach Momoko cover. Of course. Um, and this is the story. Super cool. I know, isn't it cute? Peach awesome. Moko, you're just doing great things. Um, and she draws, draws samurai women badass. All the time. All the time. <laughs> which, which is perfect for yeah. this cover because yeah. this is exactly what this book is about. This is a young girl who is is like, hey, I'm going to, I'm on this quest uh, to kind of figure out, you know, this the normal samurai story. Like somebody has... Killed my family, destroyed my village. I'm the last one left. I have to find them. And she goes to the people that they tell her, you know, go to the top of the mountain. F talk to this guy. He's going to tell you where you need to go. And, of course, he's like, well, I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm going to train you. And then she gets the training. And then she goes out on her mission. And what I love about it is she's one of those girl characters who is, like, a girl violent Samurai, I mean, not even samurai necessarily, but those girl violent revenge seekers who always are rash in their thoughts that I love so much. And so she meets a boy at one point and he's like, they, she's like, oh, I have to talk to that, that general over there because he's the one that I think like would know information about who I need to go after. And then of course he's like, you aren't allowed to speak to me. You're a woman. Why? How dare you? And the guy's like, oh, see, I told you not to talk to him. Like, why would you do that? Like, that was a total bust because now you're not going to get any information because you try to speak to this general. And she's like, I mean, it's not a total bust. And she, like, holds up a bottle of, like, his 
wine or sake or something that she stole from him. And he's like, how could you steal from the general? And she's like, well, he deserved it because he didn't help me. And so then it's just this whole, like, constant, like, oh, well, I'm going to, like, put my foot in my mouth and I'm going to take this and I'm going to do that. And I love this character as she's kind of, she's on this quest, but she hasn't had anybody guide her in you got to make the right decision to get further in life. So it's it's kind of cool to see her journey along the way as she kind of makes her way through. Cute Pretty book. Cool. Yeah. And this is issue one. This is issue one. So, so it's a good place to start. Are obviously. we in issue one? We are in issue one. We're we just issue jumped ones. to issue one. Okay, cool. Yeah. Super cool. Um, up next, we have the return, issue one of volume two of Chicken Devil, which is now Chicken Devils. Ooh, Ooh. Chicken Devils. Yes. Uh, still Brian Pupiletta writing, but it is not Hayden Sherman on art this time. Oh. Uh, which makes sense, because Hayden Sherman is on, like, four other books that we talk about loving. Um, this is, if you didn't read Chicken Devil, Chicken Devil is all about... A man who owns a fast food restaurant and his business partner decides to get involved with some, uh, you know, drug runners and makes a terrible decision, tries to steal either the money or the drugs, and it ends up falling on our lead character. And when he decides to take matters into his own hand, the only costume he has on, on hand is, in fact... The chicken mascot from the fast food restaurant. So he becomes basically a vigilante in a chicken suit and goes through all of the first volume, just taking down all of these people. And this volume opens up with him in a police station. And I love it because he recaps all of volume one for you. And he's telling the story to the police to go on record. But the police are in on a the fact that this story isn't true. And so while he's telling the story on record and it's being like, the police are like, well, you said this and this and this happened. Right. And he's like, absolutely. That's what happened. And then it was followed by this, but then there's all these little pencil lines that are like, that's not actually what happened. Or, uh, this is actually what, and then it's like, this is what happened. And a pencil line draws, draws to another panel. And that panel shows the actual scene from the first volume. Uh, but he's, the story they're telling is, is completely different yet completely the same he's like oh part of that is true uh so it's super cool and then he goes home in this story and his wife hates him his kids hate him nobody and he's like look I know you hate me because you think I like didn't do any of these things but like I did like let me tell you what actually happened in this time period while I was working as this chicken vigilante and he tells tells her the whole story and she's like I don't believe any of that if you were gonna lie to me like you could have made up a better story and so you get this whole family dynamic and all of this. And the whole thing, the whole reason for volume one was because he was trying to, like, avenge his family and that he thought had, like, been taken or killed or whatever. And so he, I, I know I'm not going to tell you what it was, though. But he, uh, he's just, so he's so mad because he did all of this work just to protect his family. And his family uh, doesn't care. And now he is back in it, no matter what, if he wants to or not. And it's not just him this time around. So, uh oh, yeah, super fun. This yeah, is I one of the most wait. fun stories. I can't wait. I haven't read it yet. I'm very excited. And also, shout out to Brian Brucoletto, cause you're super cool. We had a bunch of issues of this stolen by issue Porch one. Pirates of issue one. And so, what did Brian Brucoletto do? Sent us signed copies of his heard, comps, all his, his comps, all his comp copies, including like. His Aftershock Ambassador exclusive that hadn't even come out yet. Oh, yeah, it was the Happy yet. Hour exclusive. It was like the Happy Hour exclusive, and it didn't even get released. I couldn't find it online. I was like, what is this variant? And I looked all over for it. Lo and behold, they did a Happy Hour online, which is also where this shirt's from. Uh, they did a Happy Hour online, and it was like, there's that variant. He sent mm -hmm. us the variant before it even came out, and it was signed. And like, what a dude. Yes, what a dude. Shout out to Brian Bugaletto. Absolutely. Keep doing your thing, man. You're Pretty a safe cool things. person. 
Ooh, yeah. We'll save that for last. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, man. There's so many books. Right? I don't, you know. Uh, let's go this whatever. one. Okay. Scout. Oh, I can't wait to read this. Number one, The West Moon Chronicle. What'd you think? Oh, it's Moon? I thought it was Mood. No, Moon. Okay, West Moon. West Moon Chronicle. Um, This is a lot of fun. Yeah? This is, um, honestly, this is one of your, like, classics. It almost should have been a Black Caravan, but it's not dark. It's not as dark as a Black Caravan, but it's got a lot of the elements of Black Caravan stories. Because it is about a boy who comes back to, like, his grandfather's house. And he brings a young girl with him. And he's like, hey, like... Grandpa, we got to get you out of this house. I'm going to sell it. I think we should move on. And the grandpa's like, I'm not moving. I have to protect the town. I have to stop all these demon spirits and all these monsters and creatures that are coming out. And the son's, the grandson's like, no, no, no. Like, get over it. Like, none of those things are important. It's not your responsibility. And if you want to stay in the town, you can stay in the town. But we got to get you off this, like, haunted, cursed land. And, uh... It's great because the whole time you're seeing all of these things that are happening and the grandfather is just like, you can't trust anybody. You know, we got it. We're on this. We're in this quest together. Like, son, like you can you can drive away. You can run away from all your problems, but you can't run away from monsters. They'll follow you. And uh, the way it twists and turns and drags everybody into the story is just really, really cool. Um, I love I love this, I love this art. It's super cool. It's so much fun. Uh, like I said, it, it's honestly, if it was a little bit darker, it would probably be a Black Caravan title. Um, but it just, it kind of fits that aesthetic really well, too. Yeah. I love yeah, it. I, I don't wait to read it. I know. That's why I'm not saying a lot I know. I was it. about to read it. We had a great customer come in. I had a fantastic conversation instead of reading it. I'm glad I had the conversation. I can read a book whenever. Absolutely. But uh, I'm very excited. I know, this and I so cool. I know I read, you're like, excited the first, about like, it. Four so pages. That's why I haven't said anything. Dude, and honestly, awesome. like oh, I get everything what? like turns and twists so much oh, that I feel what? like anything I Holy say cow. is a spoiler. Whoa. Yeah, don't look back whoa, there. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. What? Everything. What I... does this become? I know. Oh my, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Um, I really liked it. It was one of those, like, Scout did that uh, White Ash book, which was another one of those where it was like, oh, like, I thought this was just two people having a conversation, and now all of a sudden, like, there's these creatures everywhere. This is kind of one of those where I was like, oh, 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 we have, we have, like, real monsters things, and yeah. things like that. I, I mean, like, oh. we showed a couple of the monsters in here, but, like... Yeah, it goes. Okay. It, and you you just got to get in it. Get in it now. West Issue, Moon Chronicle. West Moon Chronicle, issue 1. Just hop on it cuz you're going to you're going to enjoy it. Then just I mean even if not the artwork. The artwork alone. And it was like a fast read too from what I was kind of seeing. Like it yeah, there's pretty, a lot of like it, it action. clipped along. Yeah, yeah, it was like a lot of action. Um mm -hmm. yeah, come by, read it in the shop if you need to, you know. Get your hands on these books, check out some new things that you haven't haven't read before. And the approach yeah. From boom. From boom. Another number one. Another mm -hmm. new thing. Yes. Uh, something's killing the children. Who knows, right? Right. Boom anytime we put something out now, we're all like on edge. Boom. <laughs> uh, this is one. Honestly, I had two or three people immediately come in on Wednesday morning and ask if we had it. So this is going to really? be. This is one to to watch for um, and kind of check out. But this is the story is of. An it is an airplane and. Cool. This is like a creature monster mouth behind it. I just thought it was snow being Ooh, pushed by the propellers. And one spoilers. of our customers was like, no, did you see this monster mouth on this thing? And I was like, no. No, I didn't. And yes, then I was like, oh, yeah. It still looks yeah. like a design, mm -hmm. but... It's like monster mouth. Sounds like a spoiler. It's not. I don't know okay. anything. That's why I was confused. They kept asking me where the monster with the airplane book was. And I was like, no, but it does look like a monster. Um... So maybe that's something that'll come our way later maybe. on. Maybe. Uh, but this art's great, though. Issue one starts with a man who is is a firefighter um, kind of situation. Like, you know, he works at the airport. He's one of those, like, got to be the emergency hands on deck at the airport. And they, is, they hear that there is a massive snowstorm coming. And they are like, okay, we got to get all hands on deck. Let's get this going. We're going to be stuck here. You know, he shows them check on air traffic control, set that up. And they're a small airport. It's not like, you know, flying into one of the major airports. Like they're like, we might have one plane that's still trying to come in and then we got to clean off the runways and do all this stuff. So they get the flight in, they get all these people in and then it's kind of like, okay, what else do we got? Who else is coming? What's going on? And, uh, 
all the things that could go wrong. You get like, oh man, the snow just got worse. Oh my gosh, the power is flickering. Oh my gosh, suddenly there's a plane coming our way and we don't have anything else on the docket and this plane isn't on, like it's not even showing up on our radar. Like where is it coming from? Uh, What is happening? We don't know. And uh, everything from then on just becomes terrible. You get classic horror movie, what is going to happen next kind of and situation. I'm about to spoil I know, you can't open shooting. anything else. Yeah, and with the number one, I don't want to spoil it. It's like, get in now. Get in early. Get it. And honestly, like, if you're a fan of those, like, those horror movies where you, like, inst- you know this is going to be bad. Like, it's kind of like we always talk about with the autumnal where they're like, oh, it's, like, the most beautiful fl- fall. And you're like, fall is dangerous. I hate it. The second they're like, it's a snowstorm. We're probably going to get snowed in at the airport. You know I'm how like, I feel about snow. oh, we're going to get stuck at the airport and something bad is going to happen. And uh, all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. Cannot wait things. to read this. It's so much fun. Cannot wait and uh, speaking of things that I cannot wait for, do I get to talk about this book? You get to talk about this book. This is a one shot. Yeah. Scotch McTiernan's Halloween Party. Okay, I can't talk and do the thing and hold the thing, so you gotta hold it. Uh, Scotch McTiernan's Halloween Party. This is something else. This is a Scott Koblish cover I'm showing right here. Uh, you know Scott Koblish from She Venom, probably. Done a lot of a lot of Marvel stuff. This book's wild. This book is super wild. It's a lot of dialogue and it's a lot of cool art. And it is about this monster who goes to a Halloween party. Turn turn a little, yeah, there you go. Little strip, there you go. Yeah, uh, this monster clown goes to this Halloween party here and on his way there, uh, a shooter, an active shooter situation happens and kills a lot of people. When, when I hit that little thing, you can pull it, pull, pull it back down. I know it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, and I think you can show. There's no like nudity no, or not anything. At all. I but, just want to um, know which one I'm going to show. You do, you, you, you. Okay, talk. all right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm very excited. It's show. a lot. It's a lot going on. Anyway, an active shooter situation goes on, and this clown is like, uh, you know, we go to this this Halloween party, and there's all these monsters there, real actual monsters, and they're like, man, it's not it's not as much fun to be a monster anymore in America these days because the regular humans are kind of just terrible monsters. And so they try and find a way to make Halloween scary again. And of course, in doing that, they get this guy, Scotch McTiernan, who comes in, who's kind of like a, uh, an Arnold Schwarzenegger like character. And he is full of bad puns and misogyny and, uh, jokes and he is the star of the secret history of weed. If you read that, which is oh, the he's same the star team. of it. Yeah, oh, the same okay. Team. All right. Yeah. Sweet. So he comes in and he's going to save Halloween and basically he gives this story and they say, tell us the story of the time that you saved us from that alien. And he's like, oh, the alien in the jungle. So you think it's going to be like a predator situation, but it's actually just the story of E.T., except he rides the bicycle up to the UFO and throws a grenade into it and kills everyone and then says that he saved the hostage, but that hostage was just Emmett, essentially, from E.T. and... I don't necessarily know if it was a hostage situation or if he just kind of messes everything up. Um, but the entire thing is social commentary. Obviously, like with the active shooter and the thing about, uh, you know, humans being scarier than monsters, it kind of ends up becoming a social commentary on that in general. And Big Pharma. And Big Pharma, because the uh, the owners of a big pharmacy corporation are at all of the monster parties and are the most evil of all of the monsters. And so it has a lot of the social commentary kind of stuff in it. My favorite line in there is that the teacher is about to teach class and uh, they say, oh, well, we can't, we were going to read this classic comic book today, but it's been banned by all the school board Nazis. Um, I, I don't, you know, again, they, we consider it politics. I don't know why we're banning anything in a country that talks about free speech, but I, I don't know. Read books, read materials. You guys get out there, read everything, read everything you can. Um, you know, obviously that's our whole thing here. Read things. But, uh, finally, you know, and I'm going to say this, it has a a part in there where it kind of looks at you and it's like, Hey reader, you have to look inward and think about who you are as humans, which is why I think this is an important book. It is a silly, crazy, uh, anchorman sort of romp of comedy, but at the same time, it's got a lot to say. It's got a lot to say, which is really important, I think. And I think Secret History of Weed did, too. It did. From what I can tell. It's and it's just satire. 
beautiful, beautiful, beautiful satire, but Halloween themed satire, and it's fun to have Halloween themed things. And it looks like they might have a continuation coming soon. We'll they kind of leave it open. So these are fun books to pick up. And again, I really like Scott Kobish. We got to meet him at uh, North Texas Comic Book Show one year. Yeah. And he was very, very, very nice to us. So super cool. Super cool. I recommend it. Pick it up. It's Halloween time. And it took me a while to read that. Yeah. It, it took was me like a heavy 45 like minutes to read. There's yeah, a, lot a lot of dialogue. It was like four story. different stories. There's in a there lot too. of stories. And I like love how they character. like do and do not connect all at the same time. Like yeah. it's like kind of disjointed, but it's a people at a party getting drunk at a party and talking. So it's mm-hmm. like, oh, somebody just interrupted to tell me this other thing. And now it's like, and they're, and like even when they're like, tell us the story. And he's like, oh, well, it started with, and they're like, no, 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 not of that story, the other one. And then so he starts to say something, and somebody else is like, no, 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 give me this one. And so I love that it, it feels like you're at a party and somebody is like trying to tell a story, and everybody's like, no, no, dude, tell the other one. Absolutely. It's great. And also, while we're at it, and Halloween and things like that, I just found out that Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, the book that we all love and grew up with, is, like, being banned everywhere now. It has been since we were kids. Really? It's been on the banned book list I bought we it from Scholastic Book yeah. Fair and, in and, schools. And that was the thing. That's, I mean, most of the books, Harry Potter sold at Scholastic Book Fairs, and yet it's also at the top of the banned book list. By who? Well, they Lots of people. taught it in school. Lots of people. These are things. I mean, all the books that are taught in school are the ones that get banned. That's where are these places? The all where, over. You where just are these somewhere. places? I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> um, that's why we gave away so many books last year. Unbelievable. Uh, up Unbelievable. next from AWA. Oh, I can't wait for this. This is so exciting. Uh, we have mm. volume, zero, volume Zero of Year Zero. Yeah. This is issue one. This is the prequel to Year Zero. I will say... This is a great place to start. If you didn't read Year Zero, this is a prequel. Prequel means you start here. Um, <laughs> and then you won't be lost. This is great. Uh, if you haven't read Year Zero, Year Zero was actually done originally by Benjamin Percy. And actually what I love about this is Daniel Krauss, who is the writer of The Autumnal, as we brought up earlier being one of our favorite stories, um, took on writing this. And there is a great letter from the back of this where... Uh, Daniel said that Axel Alonso, who runs AWA, came up to him and said, I want you to take on the prequel for Year Zero because you, you're like the zombie guy. You know, he wrote, uh, all, he finished George A. Romero's novelizations for him after he passed. And he they're like, you are the zombie guy. Like, George Romero's family trusted you to write zombies. Like, write George's zombies. Like, you should write a zombie book for us. And he's like, no, I'm done with zombies. Dude, where do you go after you wrote you finished George, George stuff. yeah. You finished George Romero's stuff. Like, there's nowhere to go from there. I don't want to do it. And they're like, it was Benjamin Percy, and like, you know, it was a really good story. And he's like, okay, I like Benjamin Percy enough. I'll check it out. And so he read it and was like, oh my god, I want to do this. And was actually supposed to start writing this book right at the same time that everybody went into COVID lockdown. And he was like, you could not find a better time to be writing a zombie outbreak a starting point story uh then that time period just looking at the news and everything going on in our world was such he said he cranked the story out in no time because it was just like oh this is just what's happening right now yeah uh and so this story follows just like the year zero books did uh previously it follows four different stories from all different points in the world and it's uh all about really the way we hear information uh you know you've got one story that's some flight attendants that are talking about how flight attendants hear everything on airplanes and uh how they kind of hear like all the things they do and the way information circulates between them and they're talking they overhear some people who are talking about something an outbreak that happened and the situation that got out of control and then you follow people who are um you follow a nurse who's working in the ER and people come in and they're like, hey, something's wrong with our grandma uh, and we need you to come look at it. And they were they were like, okay, where's your grandma? And they're like, she's not here. We can't bring her out of the house. She's at, she's at home. And they're like, well, I can't go. We don't make house calls. Like I can send an ambulance. And they're like, no, something's wrong with grandma. And the way that story just unfolds is crazy. And you just, there's a couple more stories and they're all like just information and people. So it, real. It, it, they intersect a little bit between all these different stories. I have to read this no. and I'm, 
already feeling too spoilery as somebody who's super excited. And that's why I'm like, I don't want to tell you. No. Okay. The, the beginning of the zombie outbreak, not. it's like COVID, and it's written by a master zombie writer. A master about zombie About the beginning writer. of a pandemic and zombies. I cannot wait for yeah, It's going to be great. And especially Daniel Krause. Daniel Krause, the thing that he did best in a terminal was is slow creeping dread you know kind of like shannon mentioned and i cannot wait for a slow creeping dread of a zombie story there is a great book that came out a couple years ago by a guy named jl Bourne. And it's called day by day armageddon and it's like this journal that was found about this guy who started writing about the zombie pandemic outbreak mm -hmm. as it happened and so it's like day one there's some weird stuff going on on the tv today and they're talking about this virus until like day 183 and he's holed up in a bunker with all of his supplies and it's like the journal has like blood spots on it it's a fantastic book i love that intro story and especially a master storyteller like daniel krauss is and another chicago chicago homie nice. you know which is super cool yeah um, yeah he lives in chicago right now nice. but very cool i cannot wait you're gonna it's okay. great yeah it's just so exciting um and then our last number one that's not in our pick of the week section yeah um our last number one is a legacy of violence this is actually like our copy because it was bent and damaged but it is from mad cave studios and it's um it's colin bunn and andrea, andrea moody uh this With is this bunny mask next to it here there you go <laughs> bring that up so it's a lot of andrea's work super awesome i cannot wait to read this oh my gosh tell us what's going on i don't want to okay. <laughs> um it's it's such a cool book that's you, then let's just show andrea right cool let's art. just show andrea's art yeah. it's uh it's fantastic you get um honestly this is for those people who you know like you who are kind of like i love the stories where they use violence as the metaphor for mm -hmm. in the horror story you're gonna get a lot of that in this book and it, it does follow, you know, we've got this, you've got your doctor story, and basically somebody shows up to the doctor's office and is is in the ER, essentially, and is just dying. And the doctor is, like, the, the guy names, like, oh, it's you, it's you, I was supposed to find you, uh, kind of situation. And then the patient, something happens with the patient, and I don't want to get too spoilerly. But then uh, the doctor, we fast forward a little bit and we find the doctor on this, you know, Doctors Without Borders kind of mission and trying to get away from things that happen in that hospital and in that situation. And he keeps being told, oh, you have to find this, you, you have to find this thing, you have to find this thing. And uh, while he is on his way to find the thing and help, uh, work with the other situations, things get darker and more stuff happens and uh violence is everywhere violence is everywhere it's really what i'm gonna say and uh then we've got this possibly this mastermind behind it all or something we don't really know um we i have cannot wait to read this no it's idea really uh by the end like really where this is going and uh, yet you kind of feel like you do at the same time and uh, it's it's great um and just get this on Andrea's art is just so fantastic. One I, of the best artists. I absolutely love this. Yeah, this is it's it's great. I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see Mad Cave. Uh, just all the new books that Mad Cave's been putting out. We talked about this all year long with things like Speed Republic, and just um, we're seeing this like up up and up from Mad Cave. And uh, this, I honestly do not have anything left. Yeah. This is this sold out this week. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not surprised. And it was great. I didn't even, like, people were just coming in like, oh, my gosh, you have Legacy of Violence. This is fantastic. And there was a point, Hell like, yeah. midway through the week where uh, I looked at the wall and I was like, what's that empty spot on the wall? And then I was like, oh, my God, Legacy of Violence is completely gone. And not surprised at all. I'm not surprised at all. It's Colin Bunn. And, He's writing everything for everyone. And, you know, Wednesday Phil one of his favorite writers of all time. And we've got this amazing Andrea Muti art, and which is always cool, no matter it's what. Cool. It's always cool. Yeah. And this is his second time with Colin Bunn because they did Parasomnia together. They did Parasomnia together. Yeah. Or they're still doing Parasomnia They're still together. doing it. Volume yeah, 2 of Parasomnia two. is out right now. Yeah. Uh, which is also just a really cool story. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Awesome. 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 I cannot wait to have Andrea here. 
I know. I'm, I'm so actually cool. going to have to order more of these specifically because I got to see if there's more. I might have to call Mad Cave. All these commission ideas right. going through my head. Got to call Mad Cave down in Miami and see if we can, if we have to, you yeah. know, send right Wednesday Miami. Phil down there to pick up some more or something. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Phil, if you want to go to Miami. Right. You know, I, I might need you to go to Mad Cave and get me some more books. Excuse to go to Miami. May I have some more? Yeah, pizza? absolutely. Are we going into Picks of the Week? Mm -hmm. That's a perfect time. I mean, there's no there's, there's no. Mm -mm. Um, perfect time for more wine. How high you want to go? Ahead? I mean, whatever. you got to have some for yourself, too. Whoa. <laughs> like, get yourself some. Okay. Don't, don't, don't give it all to me. I'll drink it all, but don't give it all to me. And this is Photograph, the Pinot Noir. Photograph. It's delicious. It is. It is good. Again, I like it because did you just show you that whole thing? I did. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good. That's why I was like, it's good, yeah, it's good wine. Uh, it is. It's not. Again, it's kind of kind of sweet, but not too crazy sweet, and it's yeah. it's got that dry aftertaste of a Pinot Noir. Yeah. Um. All right. So, our pick of the week this week, uh, is is a publisher. Essentially, yeah. It's essentially, essentially, just essentially a, a publisher. A, a We're publisher. ramping up to Halloween. We're talking a lot about Halloween. Uh, this publisher has been putting out a Halloween one-shot at least one a week now for the last couple of weeks, which have all been a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. There's more coming out in the next two weeks, I believe. Yeah, probably. And I I know one's coming out next week for sure. Yeah, I think there's two more. Nice. Over the next couple of weeks. Very exciting. Um, a lot of you guys probably know it already. We were talking about Halloween season coming up and great things to read for the season. From Archie Comics. From Archie Comics. Specifically, so what we got? the Archie. Uh, Archie does two things. A, obviously, we've got the regular Archie, but then Archie is known for the Archie Horror, horror line. Yes. Uh, and so we're going to start there, speaking of Cullen Bunn, uh, with the one shot. Yeah. Chilling Adventures of Salem. Chilling Adventures of Salem. And you and I haven't even talked about this yet. So if you guys know Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Obviously, show, Netflix show, mm -hmm. extremely popular, mm -hmm. fantastic show. Uh, if you guys read the comic, everyone who has, like, in the comics, even better. Yeah. And it's probably the comic at on the Archie Horror line that is... The most... The most violent. beloved. Oh, yeah, that's you. violent. But, uh, you know, Afterlife with Archie kind of kicked off that entire thing, and mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that here in a minute. But um, it's definitely the darkest spookiest oh absolutely uh, most terrifying most unnerving one and then they made the show out of it and Riverdale is kind of based in I don't think Riverdale the show would have happened if it wasn't for Archie's Archie horror. horror line no not yeah. at all they they needed that to kind of give them that push it to, yeah. to darker stuff yeah it definitely started there and the even season two of Riverdale is about a serial killer mm -hmm. you know they were they were already headed in that direction but then Chilling Adventures of Sabrina came out read that book it really is fantastic and now we finally get chilling adventures of salem they kind of kept the art the same is it the same artist um i know we've we've got that obviously we're going to talk about chilling adventures of Sabrina here um what do we no got? what do we got no it was robert hack that did the art oh okay yeah and this is dan shannon mm -hmm. um okay cool 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 yeah. tell us about it um well this story follows salem the cat which is awesome. Which is amazing. And if you don't know Salem the Cat, he is uh, Sabrina's familiar, but he's also a warlock that's been imprisoned in a cat. So he is a talking cat. He's a talking cat. And he's adorable, and our cat is in love with him. Um, but this is Salem. He's kind of starts happy. out with violence. Let's show yeah. some violence. He starts out with Salem taking down a rat. Sorry, I forget that I have to do things yeah. today. Um, and kind of talks about, you know, Salem kind of talks about being the hunter um, and not. Not really being at the bottom of the food chain. And then Salem is caught and put in a cage. And we find out that a man is uh, trying to awaken some demons. And the sacrifices he's making to the demons is neighborhood pets. Yes. And I... And, yeah. Transforming them into something... Demonic. Demonic. Of some sort. Uh, and it's great because you just get this sassy Salem the whole time. Like, okay, but like, I'm Salem the cat. Right. Being sassy. <laughs> like, yeah, you really couldn't possibly think that like, you're going to take me out. <laughs> like, and I love it because Salem's so great. And I, I, I go back and forth between reading this in the imaginary Salem the cat voice that I've always had uh, and the Nick Bouquet yeah. uh, voice. Just because, you know, when it gets to the dark Salem, I'm like, he probably doesn't sound that adorable. But at the same time, here we are. Uh, 
If you're a fan of Archie, if you like Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, this is kind of just a great companion to that. And it is a one shot, so it's a good way to just get in the spooky season with some cats. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad we kind of have to cut it off there. It's not a very long issue. Um, but I think that this is going to be something that we talk about in the RG Horror line mm-hmm. that definitely fits in with the rest of the books from it. I mean, we've had Afterlife with Archie. We've had Jughead the Hunger, where Jughead's a werewolf. We've had, and we're going to go through, we're gonna go we're through, just through them, go them right now so we can show. And then do we'll wanna, do the other one last. Okay, that sounds like build a great up. plan. That build sounds up. like a great plan. Uh, let's, I mean. I mean, we've already got Cullen Bun up there, so let's just go with Cullen Bun again. Uh, with Blossom 666, what if Cheryl and Jason were both in line to be the Antichrist? Yeah. And they yeah. were in a battle to the death. Jason is Cheryl's brother. Twin brother. Twin brother. Yeah. If you saw Riverdale, you know that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And but we're assuming that right. our viewers have seen Riverdale. Cher Blossom is just another one of the characters in the Archie universe. And she's usually kind of the, the bitchy. Yeah, mean girl. Mean, bitchy mean girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. The uh, the Regina. George. Regina George of the situation, as it were. Uh, but yeah, and her, her and her twin brother are in line to be the Antichrist. Yes. Also Colin Bunn, and in the back in the letters in Chile Adventures of Salem, they said they were so happy with Colin Bunn on this title and the things that he did that they needed to have that for Salem, which is cool. Yeah. Um, you brought up Vampironica. This is volume one of Vampironica. She did get a second volume with New Blood. That's Veronica as a vampire. Yes. So Veronica Vampir- became a v- Vampironica. I love the art in this book. The art is my favorite thing. Well, and is this, this is this Greg Smallwood, right? Is it? Yeah, this is, uh, if you're a fan of Human yeah. Target right now. Oh, yeah. Um, this is Greg Small- Smallwood both on writing and art. And I think Meg Smallwood helped with the writing, but Greg did uh, both art and writing on it as well. Does so, this yeah. have New Blood in it too? No, we do have New Blood. Um, did I bring it? But well, no. New Blood's a one shot? No, it's another volume. New Blood's a volume. It's volume two. Okay, so this is volume one mm-hmm. of Vampironica. So if you've ever wanted to know what it would be like if Vampironica was, uh, if Veronica Veronica was, was a vampire. vampire, here we are. Yeah. Uh, and if you wanted to know what it would be like if Jughead was a werewolf. Which is hilarious because Jughead is the one known for eating stuff, like cheeseburgers. Cheeseburger. Uh, love Jughead. I love the art on this. This was Michael Walsh, who does Silver Coin, is the artist on this, with Frank Terry as the writer. Absolutely. If you don't know, Archie plays hard. Archie always gets the best of the they best to do their stories. Top tier, top tier uh, art, artists and writers. And this is a super fun book. I was subscribed to this at my yeah. LCS back when it was coming out, um, which is super cool and super fun. Uh, this book is comedy mixed with horror and was i think the first one after afterlife with archie which afterlife with archie kicked it off and then this was the second one to follow it up didn't chilling adventures of sabrina come before this there's a good chance that i it thought did. it did yeah there's a good chance that it did but it was still archie like this was archie madhouse so yes and this built a universe because we had afterlife with archie and then chilling adventures of sabrina they kind of were in their own, own thing yeah, yeah. And then this came back kind of into that mm-hmm. Afterlife with Archie universe because everybody wasn't dead and whatever right. from being zombies. But it kind of started building this world. And then we got Vampironica in there and there is Vampironica versus, versus Jughead the versus Hunter. Jughead. And I love that in all of them, Betty is just the monster hunter. And again, even if you guys are like, I don't know, I never really read Archie's. I saw them at the grocery store when I was a kid. This is completely different stuff. Mm-hmm. This is it. There's comedy. There's horror. There's adult themes that are not probably for the same uh, audience that the digest that you saw at the grocery store were for. And this is Afterlife with Archie right here. This is the original. You might know the artist on this one. Francisco Francavilla. Yeah. Who's fantastic. I mean, you want to open that? I do. I do want to open. I want to open all of the pages. I know. Look at this. Look at this super, super, super cool Try not to crack the spine on this future person's book. Right. On on unbelievable art. Talk about top favorite artist. Yeah, and Frank Villa. It's insane. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't read this, spoiler alert, uh, there is no ending. Yeah. We never got a volume two. Right. It kinda just kinda fell off. And was there a six through twelve that came out? Warren so. called me looking for the six through twelve and I was like, I thought they came out, but this this is only one through five? We, one we, through six. We've got you got it. It doesn't say anything on oh. here. We couldn't even find it. Oh my god! And 
I was looking all over it, and I'm like, I guess this is just the whole thing. I thought that there was only the one trade and nothing else yeah, came out. Yeah, no other trades have come out. No. But it all came out in single issues at the time. I think this is a through five. It's through five. Mm-hmm. So there you go. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 There was a free comic book day volume two issue zero that came out and is kind of desirable now because of that. Yeah. Um, but Chilean Adventures of Sorcery. Chilean Adventures of Sorcery, which is kind of like the Archie Horror version of EC Horror. Yes. It's just kind of... And it's kind of just single stories and aren't really Archie related. It's kind of just Archie publications doing horrific stories. If you're looking for something not in the Archie universe, but just looking for some great classic horror stories for the season, this is a great. Super one. cool book, and that I believe is the one that's coming out next week. Is Chilling Adventures in Sorcery Volume Two, Ooh. which they're doing. I think it's done as a one shot. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then of course, speaking of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, it's another one you might want to crack, and another one that didn't finish. Yes, and is unbelievably fantastic and cool and dark and gruesome and frightening if you actually want an unnerving horror story for the holidays that will actually make your skin crawl this, this is, is this is a good one i'm a big horror fan uh there's there were some scenes where i had to sleep with the lights on yeah you you read this to me um out like or we took turns i think reading yeah. this out loud to each other and there were some moments in Gosh, can I even show that? I, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Like, but... there's some moments in here where um, you're like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is a thing. We're we're going there." And uh, they went they went really dark with Chilling Adventures of Serena. Yeah, as you can see here, the show not near as horrific as yeah. the book. Um, and there are some horrific parts in the show. There are too. some horrific parts in the show, not near as horrific as the book. Yeah, uh, but. It's fantastic, and you should definitely read it. And they mm-hmm. have released one other issue. Mm-hmm. We have Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, issue nine, and we had a uh, M- Madame Satan one shot. Right, shot-shot. Madame Satan one shot. But otherwise, that's it. That's kind of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you definitely want great horror uh, for the season, something to read that's truly unnerving. This is it. This is going to be. Our, our top pick for that. Yes. And then... Back to this week's releases. Yeah. Uh, the introduction of two new characters to the Archieverse. Trick and Treat. Trick and Treat. This is the annual... We get an annual special... A uh, Halloween a spectacular, spectacular. Every time. That's always a, at least one new story and then a bunch of like the digest stories told in bigger format. Um, Which actually this is... Three or four different digest stories that are kind of in continuing parts that were never really released together in the digest. They were always separate. And I've gone back because I have a lot of those original digests and then they got reprinted in the, in the giants. Um, Yeah. There you go. Thanks. This is trick and treat here though. This is the new story. And you have these cute little demon spirits. The, uh, the pumpkin guy is trick and the ghost guy is treat. And basically, Trick thinks that uh, Halloween should be about costumes, and you can turn the page. He thinks that uh, Halloween should be about costumes, and Treat thinks that it should be about... Or, wait, hold on. Treat thinks that it should be about costumes and candy, hence and his name. And having Treat. fun with your friends. Yeah. And, and Trick, Trick just thinks... wants to scare people. Yeah. And... Be as scary as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was very familiar for us. I didn't get to zoom in on the oh, page. Oh, no. Here, I'll put it back. Okay. okay. So uh, they decided to have a competition to see which one is actually the true embodiment of Halloween is having fun with your friends and a fun costume and getting candy and all of that. The most fun part of ha- the true spirit of Halloween or is the true spirit of Halloween uh, being a scary jerk. Yeah. And uh, I love the way that their story plans out. But I, I do want to kind of we talked about this so i want to show this this is really cool they actually made like a first appearance page in the back for the first the fact that this is the first appearance of trick and treat and there's already merchandise there's already merchandise on the archie website for these two characters because they're so cute and what a concept i mean this is always this is like kind of the whole thing about halloween right is halloween about costumes and candy and fun or is it about 
scaring away the evil spirits and being scary yeah. to do that. You know, that's always what the tradition of Samhain has been about. And this is this is one of the throwback issues here about a cursed bracelet. And this, what you're looking at right now, is the Boo Bus, which I absolutely love. It's a, a mobile DJ bus that Reggie, I think, owns. Um, and, of course, terrible things always happen with the Boo Bus. But I'm, I'm waiting for my Archie Boo Bus playset action figure vehicle thing. Um, I just love that. It's a pumpkin-shaped mobile DJ and lighting unit. I think that's hilarious. It's like something that would be in Scooby-Doo or something. Um, but yeah, there's a curse bracelet story in the back and the curse bracelet gotten by Betty and Veronica and terrible things happen to them. So they go to get rid of it and it goes, the end, question mark, exclamation point. And then Archie gets it and Jughead and then they take it and terrible things happen to them and then they pass it off again and then terrible things happen to them. And they pass it off again, and it becomes this thing. And at the end of each one, it's like, or is it? And I think finally, like, Mr. Weatherby's wife or something gets I mean, it's always something. Right, so it's was, always, all the bad stuff always falls on Weatherby. Absolutely. I think Trick and Treat are definitely going to be characters that come up annually now in the Archie universe. Absolutely. And it, like we were saying, it's, that's that's Halloween. Is it scary? Is it fun? We don't know. It's always it's a good time. It's all of them. And to put them into a little pumpkin and a little ghost is the cutest thing in the entire world. Absolutely. Stay and tuned for those to be our costumes. I am CGCing a copy of this. Just to, I'm going to put the post-it on it. First appearance trick and treat. It even says it in the book. You know, I gotta gotta lock that in while I can. Right, it says it in the book, so I it mean, it's literally it's labeled on the cover. Like, does it really? It say says it? introducing the spirits of Halloween. The spirits of Halloween, trick and treat. Look, they're so cute. Hold on, they're awesome. Yeah, see, and it says meet two new characters to the Archie universe. So they are trick calling them two, like characters to the universe. To the so universe. we will probably see more of. And I think Archie might be jumping on the first appearance trend. We had a new character in it a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, And, you know, I mean, even Kevin Keller has become beloved. Yeah. And with good reason. I mean, Archie just has great characters. And I love that they're in a high school. So it's open to have all of these different characters and different personalities. And this is great. Yeah. It's wonderful. Well, so there's... There's a pick. Picks and hot new this week. Archie is our pick of the week. Absolutely, Archie and, Archie. and great horror books for the season. Yes. Um, all right, so we've got some books in stock this week. Are you ready for this? I'm not. No, probably not. So, so we're going to go through this really quickly. Uh, this is Wolverine issue 25, speaking of Benjamin Percy. Wow, 25. Uh, we are cranking through this, and I love really This is like a really dynamic looking cover That's on this thing. Cover. That's great. Um, we've got a uh, Immortal X Men issue seven. This is a Judgment Day tie-in. So if you're reading the uh, Avengers X Men Eternals saga that's going on right now, this is the Immortal X Men uh, tie-in. There's the Legion of X tie-in to Judgment Day. This is issue six of Legion of X. I love that we just went with like the uh, Hickman bubbles on the cover. Oh yeah. X Force is tie in. This is issue 32 of X Force. They all came out in one week. This is so, like, dude, there's three like or four X Men uh, titles every every day, every week. Yeah. Uh, Superman, Son of Kal El. Uh, it's just issue 16, and we have seen the return of Kal El. Superman is finally back. He's been gone for a long time in uh, action comics. He's been on like a war world. He's finally back. This is part two of his return. Black Adam in theaters. You guys going to see Black Adam? Drop it in the comments. No spoilers. I yeah, can't wait. We didn't Just let us know anything. if you're excited to go. I'm really excited to yeah. know if you... Yeah. Right. No trailer comments. No, I hope I see this person or I can't wait to see this person. Just tell us you're Just excited. tell us yeah. yes or no. Uh, Wakanda also do not spoil anything from this in the comments. But We haven't seen any trailers for any of these movies. We don't watch I'm trailers. Just excited to see them. So you don't need to, you don't need to get hyped on these. Trailers aren't for us as comic book fans. We're going. We're obviously going. We don't need to know anything. Let's go in and be shocked. There's uh, some shocking things that have happened in some episodes of some shows that have come out lately. And uh, you get that feeling when it first happens. And you're like, oh, my God, this is so exciting. Have that about everything, you everything. guys. Everything. Don't watch any trailers. Just go and see it. And look, there's a but Wakanda we book. We got a new Wakanda excited. book. Uh, it's got a really cool art germ, uh, Killmonger. Very yeah. Oh awesome. God, super great. Kind but of thirst trappy. Very thirst trappy. Yeah, which is cool. Which is cool. Yeah. Um, and this is, honestly, this is another one of those books that people have been picking up this week. I've had a lot of kids come in. I don't know if you know this, but uh, most, a lot of kids, their favorite superhero is Black Panther. 
Uh, this yeah. is a, a big thing for kids these days is they really, like, there's so many kids who are like, Black Panther is my favorite character. The movie was awesome. It was an awesome movie. And even, awesome. like, his intro in Civil War was fantastic. Dude. Uh, and if so, I was the age that I was when, like, Batman Forever came out, and if I was the age when Black Panther... If Black you were Panther. that age when Black Panther came out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly. Dude, I was an adult and Black Panther still became my favorite. And it was still immediately yeah. my favorite MCU movie. Was, this is yeah. so much fun. And yeah. a lot of kids this week were like, oh my God, I got to get this. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Great. for all you people wondering which books are the hot books this week, Wakanda. Uh, yeah. Venom is back with issue 11. Al uh, Ewing? Nope, Ram V. Ram V, that's right. So, right. yeah, they've been going back and forth, but for mm-hmm. the most part, we've seen a lot more of Ram V writing this story than Al Ewing. Cool. Um, Star Wars High Republic is back. This is new issue one for Star Wars High Republic. Awesome. Star Wars, new issue one. We're starting over. Star Wars Visions also out this week. This is the new Star Wars title launching this love week. Love the art in this book. I know. Love I love the, the covers art. that they did for this, but yeah, this. Super cool. Look at that. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's crazy. This, what, Not this that is ad. the one that I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right here. It's right here. I love the the little tiny yes. bits of spot yeah, color. Yeah, with the spot color and the with red. With the lightsabers and, and like r 2 d lights. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, what a great book. God, that's cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Star Wars issue 28 out this week. This is a good week. See, Star Wars also yeah. usually has. There are three books that I never take the tag off of. It's Spider-Man, uh, Star Wars, and Spawn. I mm-hmm. knew this week just sits up there. Uh, Prodigy issue four. This is Mark Millar's uh, newest title that's going on. This is the Icarus Society. Yeah. Um, Punisher War Journal issue one. This is Ooh, the new Punisher bring War back Journal. Worm. Mm-hmm. We're hey, we've gone full nineties right and now. And it's with our new Punisher too. It's with our who new Punisher. Who is the fist of the hand? The fist of the hand. <laughs> he is the fist of the hand. Uh, the Jurassic. You know, you know. <laughs> the Jurassic League issue six of six, and we've got our dinosaur. <laughs> Dark side. Dinosaur Dark Side, what? Give me this. <laughs> You're like, Give me this. See. What's he look like? He's what? <laughs> he's like a stegosaurus and he's eating other things. Gee, this is awesome. Oh, okay, this kind of... is DC superheroes as dinosaurs. Yes. Another book that all the kiddos love. Uh if you got a kiddo at home. And if this up for him. you're on that Daniel Warren Johnson train right now, he's writing this book, so you should jump on it. Comics are fun. Yes. Enjoy your comics. Uh, Iron Fist. This is his Judgment Day title. Mm. Uh, so if you're reading the current Iron Fist series, this is actually listed as a number one because it is his Judgment Day one shot. So he's getting his judgment right now. Let's see how he, he plays out. Uh, Ghost Rider issue seven. Look at this Maria Wolf cover. She just, just freaking baller. With all those flames. Look at that. What? Let me zoom what? in on that. Yeah, that's what I was like. Come on. Look at this. Maria Wolf is killing it. If you're picking up variant cover art because you're like, I just really am here for the ver- the covers and I'm here for cool art, you should be grabbing the Maria Wolf covers on everything. That is an that artist is that you should be cool. picking up. Like, like, I would, oh, I would be surprised if, or I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Maria Wolf really took off. Because okay, there's skulls in the fire flames. Right. Those, that's going to be one of those covers that people look for down the line. And the thing that's hard about this, if you don't know um, uh, who, what Maria Wolf's art looks like, I almost said Maria Hill. If you don't know what Maria Wolf's art looks like, they very rarely have Maria Wolf's name on the covers. Really? Like the art, like lo- wherever she signs or how, yeah. if she's signing, however she's signing is always not on the cover. And I don't know why. So it's one of those where you might have to, sorry, you might have to look inside um, or you can ask uh, and I will direct you towards it. Uh, but yes. Or if you think to yourself, man, that cover is really awesome and detailed it's for, probably a, mar- for a Marvel book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Gambit issue four is out. Chris Claremont writing Gambit again. Mm-hmm. Um, the Flash, Fastest Man Alive issue two of three. This is the movie that may or may not be coming out ever as a tie-in. Yeah, put it out as a comic. Yeah. Uh, the fans... They changed the Flash logo. Yeah, and that's because it's the movie logo. Yeah, that's what I'm talking oh, about yeah. for the movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fantastic Four, issue 48, also their judgment Getting day. judged. Getting judged. Because uh, that's what we do in America. Josh told me this is really, really good of the Judgment Day ones because it's really, really Sue forward. Like, Sue is like, Love I'm a that. badass the whole time. And Reed realizes uh, the most important thing in the world to him is Sue. Cool. Um... Love that. Daredevil issue four. 
Um, I saw a funny meme because the, the new cover, the other cover of this has like Daredevil and Elektra and like matching costumes and somebody made a meme out of it that was like, they've taken their relationship to the next level, matching outfits, uh, but super they cute. They weren't matching before? Like completely, like he's wearing the black underneath his Daredevil suit and the other cover and everything, you can kind of see uh, it. Like they And they have the same jacket and so it was like full on matchy matchy, it was cute. Um, love it, yeah. love it. Um, Dark Crisis, Worlds Without a Justice League. This is the Green Arrow uh, tie-in to the Dark Crisis world with Green Arrow and Black Canary. On. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Always wondering what Green Arrow's up to. Great character. I, and I Black love, Canary. I love Black Canary. We don't get enough Black, Black Canary. Black Canary needs to She's have her own ass. series. Seriously. Yeah. Like, we're all over here like, Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn. And it's like, dude, there's Black Canary running around. Who's like the greatest martial artist in yeah. the DC universe. We should be letting her fight people. Absolutely. Um, Captain Marvel issue 42. Speaking also. Speaking of other amazing women. And this is Carol's ass. Judgment Day. So mm. everybody's getting judged in the in the Marvel comic universe. Black Panther issue 10. I have loved these covers. They've been super, super stellar. Yeah. Um, Batman Incorporated issue 1. Another new Batman title. Cool. Um Black Adam, this is the uh, one-shot special edition movie uh, you gotta have. Oh. Batman versus... With the rock on the with cover. With the rock on the Dude, cover. Dude, this would actually be cool to get signed by the rock. This would be a cool one to get signed by the rock. We're always wondering, you know, like, oh, I want the celebrity to sign my comic of the character that they played in the movie. Shannon and I are way about the celebrity movie cover, mm -hmm. getting that signed by the celebrity. That's the one for the celebrity. That's the one. And when you get that one signed by the celebrity, totally worth the half a thousand dollars that you're going to pay. <laughs> and if this movie ends up being really popular, mm -hmm. you're going to wish you had this The Rock cover later on. Yeah, Because, sure like, are. the Tom Holland, I remember when the Tom Holland uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man came out, yeah. and everybody was like, oh, I don't want a celebrity uh, cover. I'm not going to get that. And now, now that's the only one that's a value. Right. Because Tom Holland became everybody's favorite. Absolutely. And so uh, this is going to be really cool. Something. I mean, he really does just look like, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? He does. That's his. That is literally just his wrestling pose. That's but it. one of the things I love is the Rock has actually been pushing the Black Adam comic. Yeah, Not even been, this one, but the, the regular comic, comic. He's been pushing like, "Hey, a new Black Adam is out this week. Go get it!" And right. I love that. I love to see the celebrities pushing the comic books and talking about them and telling you go to your comic book store and get that book. And honestly, out of all of this medium, you guys know this. You know, everybody gets to see the movies and the shows and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's a little more niche. The comic side of it is a little more niche. I mean, even if you're tuning into the show, you know that yourself. It's a little more niche to be into the comic side of it. And it's so cool that The Rock is pushing this niche medium. And, like, go out there and read a book, you guys. Hey, there's books out about this. Yeah. You can go to a comic book store. There are fun places to go. Go in and check it out and say hi to the people and pick up the comic. That's super neat. I love that. Yeah. You know, uh... Celebrities talk about reading. Batman versus Robin, issue two. Versus Robin. Yeah. Like him and Damien. Him and Damien are having a spat. Father, son. Ba ba bomb. Yeah, there's a thing going on. I want to go to McDonald's. Yeah. Shut up, son. We're going where I want to go. We're starting our own comic book We're series. We're a Burger King family. Versus you. <laughs> uh, it's Mark Wade writing it, so I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. 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 If there was a McDonald's versus Burger King comic, I'd read that. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Get on that, guy. Uh, I feel it's like thick too. it's a thick. That's a lot of. It's a lot of comic. A lot of comic. And not a lot of ads, comparatively speaking, for how big it is. You would think it would just be more ads, but it yeah, is actually a lot of a comic. A lot of comic. Holy cow! Yeah. It's a five ninety nine issue, but understandably you're so. You're getting your two, you're getting two issues there. Yeah. Um, All Out Avengers issue two with that Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom with, with, with the, the shield. shield. I saw that on Ultimate Spider Man first. Oh okay. I just want you guys to know that. Pull up that episode later. Ultimate Spider-Man is the answer to everything happening in First the MCU. First appearance. It's true. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, Avengers X-Men Eternals. This is the Eternals one shot. Eternals are getting judged. The Eternals are getting judged. Doing some judgment. Who's judging? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so if you know who's judging, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's the, the um, council. The Quiet Council, the people on the uh, Krakoa who judge the X Men, I think they're judging everybody. The High Inquisitor? That's Star Wars. Isn't Grand it? Inquisitor. That's still Star Wars. Is it? Yeah. Isn't it Monty Python? It's probably a little bit of both. <laughs> Someone's inquiring. <laughs> <laughs> my trick here is just to make Shannon laugh. That's the whole thing. It's my entire life. Do you need some water or something? Or some wine? I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, sorry. Granola fine. bar? 
No, definitely not a granola bar. Uh, Locus is back from Ooh, Scout cool. Comics. This is the Ballad of Men. Uh, if you didn't read volume one of Locus, it is a post-apocalyptic or an apocalyptic story about people turning into giant locusts. With crazy cool art. Crazy cool art. Beautiful and it's Scout, and so it's wonderful. Absolutely. Uh, this little book that's been going on for a hot minute called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, sure not. What? Uh, this is issue 133, yeah, and this is the Eastman cover, which is so, so cool. awesome. Always, we always show the Eastman cover. We love Kevin Eastman. He is a treasure of a human. That's true. It's another person that... And Sophie's still writing it. Love. And Sophie Campbell writing it. Unbelievable, unbelievable story. And if you're like, I'm confused, I don't know where to start, we do have a hardcover of volume one of the start of this entire thing, which I think is like issues one through 20 or something like that. But honestly, after reading it, you can just jump in at issue 100 and we're at 123? 133. 133, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still Flying. 33 issues, but it's great. It's fantastic. Um, and I have been told multiple times that the Armageddon War that is happening right now is actually a jumping in point. Mm. So. That's great. Yeah. That's great too. Yeah, the Armageddon War stuff has been super fun. Uh, also, if you guys like turtles, just come back because we're all super big turtles right. fans here. Do a power bomb issue five. We are getting to the end of Daniel Warren Johnson series. I think it might even say uh, to be concluded at the end yeah. of this. Maybe I could be lying. Tragic uh, book. A very very tragic. It's book. Really tragic. Yeah, book. to be continued. So I guess it's not a uh, super tragic book about a girl whose mother dies uh, as a professional wrestler, and then she becomes a wrestler. And, doing a power bomb? Did she die doing a power bomb? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, the girl has now been entered into a competition essentially with a demon who's like, hey, I'm going to have my own. I've decided I like wrestling and watching like humans be ridiculous. And I want to see a really great wrestling match. And the winner of my wrestling match can bring one person back from the dead. Like, I'll bring this person back. But the thing is, is that uh, it all has to be tag team. So you need to be working with somebody who wants to bring the same person back mm. from the dead as you. And so the girl goes to Wild. the guy who was responsible for the death of her mother Ooh. and says, you want this as much as I do. Let's be a team and bring my mom back. And it's Daniel Warren Johnson, so he's going to twist it around Johnson. like that. The, the, there, this issue is another, another freaking twist to the story at, and to the point where I actually yelled at the comic book at the end and was like, oh my God, we're, wow. Okay, so jump on this uh, also in my rain box if you want to just read it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got we've got damaged copies. Come by, check it out. Yeah, highball issue two from Hawaii Comics. Uh, this is one of those wild out there. Uh, again, if you like Anchorman, that kind of humor, um, that told in space. Yeah, with ridiculous space creatures and a super silly fun plot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. If you just like to laugh and you like sci-fi and laughing, it's a good one. It's a good one. Who doesn't like laughing? I don't know. Crazy people. Crazy people. I don't know. I feel like crazy people like laughing. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Wonder <laughs> Like the Joker? Yeah. He's crazy and laughs. He laughs the all Batman the time. The Batman who laughs, laughs. Uh, the Riddler laughs. Riddler See, laughs apparently too. that's... Does the Riddler like, laugh? He laughs at his own riddles. I don't know. Maybe not. The old, like, Silver Age Riddler laughs. Silver Age Riddler laughs. Now a day Riddler does not laugh. Wait, Jim Carrey what? laughed. Jim Carrey laughs a lot. Which, speaking of Modern Day Riddler, that Paul Dano book should be out in the next week or so, and I'm going to cry. Also, the next, um, the order I did today, the next up for order, Batman One Bad Day, Mr. Freeze. And I saw those covers. I they guess. animated the covers of those back in, like, February, March. And uh, if you scroll back there on my Twitter, you will I, I ordered a couple of that. every cover because I know you're going to want some. Yeah. Uh, are, they, are the covers animated? No. Too? No. Have they figured out how to do that? No. Man, we've got metal covers. We've got lenticular <laughs> covers. We've got glow-in-the-dark covers. We can't have video screen covers. God, I cannot afford metal or it'll, lenticular it'll be like a covers. It'll rubbery so. kind of a thing. Dude, you just wait. You just wait. Mark my words. Mark my words. After we get those roll cell phones... I know they're the folding ones already out. They're gonna have a roll one. They did it when when I was a kid. They came out the roll calculator. Oh yeah! That? Oh yeah! And it was yeah. like, whoa! I, I can totally roll up the calculator. I forgot about the rolling calculator. Yeah, dude, blew crap. my mind. And now they're gonna do a roll phone, and you're gonna have to go like this with your phone. 
I don't know, something, no. you know, I don't put it in your pocket. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't something think like that. We're going to have cool but... video screen comic book covers. I will buy the crap out of the first video. We have customers literally come in and they're like, you have the first glow in the dark cover, mm -hmm. which is Ghost Rider 37, 27, something, something like that. that. And yes, we do have it if you guys are interested in those. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, uh, issue 792. This is Becky Clooney and Michael Conrad still on that. The best. I love those people. We love them, guys. Yeah, I yeah. hope you're enjoying Portland. They Absolutely. just moved. They did. Yeah. They moved to Portland. So. Yeah, good for you guys. Yeah. Um, also, Becky Clooney and Michael Conrad uh, is Batgirls, issue 11. Check and that cover. I know. This is the, the super yeah. cool variant cover. I love awesome. it. Awesome. Uh, Super I've been loving these Steph and uh, Cass team up moments that they've been doing and uh, the, all the different covers that they have going on for them. And DC's about to do these 90s homage covers. So is Marvel. Marvel's calling theirs Marvel Extreme. Uh, DC is calling theirs uh, uh, just DC 90s homage covers. Uh, this seems like an ultimate Spider-Man kind of a series that's waiting to happen. It's yeah, because it's it's more it's kind of like Marvel Rising. Even mm -hmm. it's just the three girls: it's Babs, it's Cass, it's Steph, and they're okay. on their own mission, and it's super cool. Hello, DC. I know you just got bought. Uh, they also it looks like they're gonna be going up against Mad Hatter soon, and I freak out. Love Mad Hatter. I know. This is a character that doesn't get used enough. Mad Hatter, Killer Moth. Right. Great characters. Drop in the comments. What's your favorite Batman? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like not. D level. Villain. Yeah, lo lower level villains. Kite Man doesn't count. He's an anti. -hero. Right. Kite Man is not a villain. Yeah, um, but you know, throw throw it in down there. What's your uh, What's your yeah. favorite lesser known? Lesser used, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Got me yeah. I just love the Mad Hatter because you also get like the Tweedles. You just get like everything. Yeah. You get the March Hare. You get the whole Alice in Wonderland thing. And the whole thing's like weird and off putting and like horror movie. I know. I got the chance to write him for a hot second. It was great. Yeah. I was so excited to write the. Uh, Mad Hatter yeah. and DC. Honestly, if you want somebody to come on and write a Mad Hatter just book, uh, I'm I'm available. You should just write it. I know. You just write it. You know, I should. Pitch it. Right. We'll put it out in the store. Right. Xerox them. Right. Uh, DC, you DC, DC terrorists through time. This is this is their, their Halloween? This is their Halloween special. Did not feel very Halloweeny? Yeah. Not a lot of Halloween, but we do get you do get a Swamp Thing story as per usual. Uh, it wasn't very spooky. Ooh, an extra game. You get there's Etrigan, always an extra game. and there's a, a Gotham Sirens, and rewriting history because they're calling it the first actual team up. Like they, they call it in the story. They say, "Oh, I guess this is actually the first team up of the Gotham Sirens." So, whoa, changing your changing your uh, moment in time. So, uh. So it's, it's a thing. But this cover was a really, really hot cover. This VHS variant of uh, Harley and Dead Man. I had so many people calling in advance to request this this cover. Um, and I do have some left still because I was like, well, if that many people want it, I guess I'll get some extra. So if you didn't get it, this is a great way to get that Love the green horror sticker. Yes. Love the green horror sticker. I have a copy on VHS of Halloween 3, The Season of the Witch, one of the best Halloween movies. And it has the green sticker, but it's been so long over time that the glue on the back of the sticker has become untacky and just kind of slides around on there. So I always have to make sure I slip it in and make sure that green horror sticker stays intact. Cool. The green horror sticker is my favorite. Love the green horror sticker. Uh, Trick or Treat Studios, one of those, put out gem pants a couple of years ago, and there was just like green polka dots. What? But then when you looked in close, it said horror in the green polka dots. And I was like, yes, I need to order these right now. And they were already sold out, of course. Yes. As anything can be. Uh, Oren, you just said awesome cover. Let me know if you want one, my dude, and I will throw one in your box. Not many left. But um, yeah. yeah. Oren, what's up, dude? Yeah. Thanks for joining in. Um, some also, uh, yes, before I do that, yeah. uh, Ram said he loves Black Canary, too, and Dude, I just wanted to just throw that out there, because we need Black more Canary Black Canary love. love. Black Canary and Zatanna are two DC characters that never get used, and I literally had a conversation with DC when they said, what can we do for you as a publisher? And they meant, like, uh, you know, more returnability or more mm -hmm. things like that, and I was like, can we have some more Zatanna, please? And they were like... Justice League Dark. And do people, they were like, they literally said to me, I don't think people like Zatanna enough to do something. And every other comic book person, a store owner that was in the room at the moment was like, uh, everybody wants like Zatanna. Like, have you seen the prices on back issues of Paul Dini's Zatanna? Seriously. Like issue 
like ten is at least five dollars. Yeah, so. all of them They're are like all... ten dollars or more usually. Yeah, Zatanna covers are always cool. She's a super cool character. Great stories. It's, and part of the Justice League Dark, which everybody loves now ever since the anime movies have been coming out. Everybody loves it. Just saying. I don't know. Get it together. Yeah. Um, before we go into new trades, I just wanted to remind you, Chicken Devil came out this week for Volume 2, so here up. is Volume 1 of Chicken Devil. Yeah. You gotta read it. Worth it's it. It's fantastic. Hilarious. Uh, Shannon mentioned earlier that it's kind of like the thing from Breaking Bad. I've never seen Me Breaking either. Bad. This was amazing. Yeah. So. But every time I tell people the plot, they're like, oh, that thing on Breaking Bad. And I'm like, kind of like, I guess. I guess that sounds I guess like that's the thing. what it is. Yeah. I saw like the first two episodes of that show and that's Same. it. Yeah. yeah. Like when I met uh, Kristen Ritter and she, somebody was like, oh, and you were on Breaking Bad. And I was like, Shh, Kristen Ritter was on Breaking Bad? I think everybody was on Breaking Bad. I didn't know that. I hadn't gotten that far. I uh, heard that the dad from Malcolm in the Middle is on Breaking Bad. <laughs> the main character. <laughs> Never would have guessed that. <laughs> Dude, this next book. Uh, we, yes, this next book. New books out this week. We've got copies of The Closet, and I don't have very many. This is issues one through three. How I have thick this is for one through no three. No idea when James Tynion's going to give you the rest of the story. Don't get mad at me in advance. Just kind of. It, it, super was, cool book. it was his Substack book. S- yeah, scary. Like, if you guys are looking for a cool, scary thing, though, it's frightening. All about a little boy who's afraid of the monster in his closet, and they're moving away, and the dad is like, don't worry, you're moving, it doesn't matter. But the monster doesn't leave. Yeah. It's fantastic. And there is a, it's not in the kid's head. Mm-hmm. You know. Ooh, Monkey Meat. Monkey Meat. Volume one of Monkey Meat will get volume two at the beginning of 2023, which I'm very excited about. Well, this is the uh, first five issues. They are anthology style, but it is the story of a corporation called Monkey Meat. And uh, we just kind of see how terrible corporations are in a Upton Sinclair jungle style way with, can we show this art? Junie Ba uh, doing this book and just, it's oh my gosh. wild. It's like cup heady. It's so freaking good. Uh, uh, so freaking good. Uh, I'm gonna show another page. I have to. I can't help it. I'm sorry. It's just such a cool book. I want to show you all the pages every time I like flip a page. I'm like that one. No, that one. Let's do yeah, this. Absolutely. This is dynamic. Oh my god. Bright gosh. and colorful. Bright and colorful. This is so Can't good. Like... Um, I had so many subscribers to this back in Austin who were just like, yeah. I, you are because I called it a crazy version yeah. of the jungle from Upton Sinclair and so many people jumped on it and were like that is the most accurate description and uh, Wednesday Phil will tell you that uh, issue 3 is the key to this entire series it's always um, issue 3 uh, speaking of like crazy stuff. amazing art and stuff uh, Slumber this is uh, the entirety of the series this is all about a woman who it's kind of like an inception kind of thing she's a dream detective she goes into your detec- uh, dreams to kind of fight the thing that's haunting you but she's really using them all to find her own villain um i said this is the whole thing but i really think that we'll probably get another volume uh we're probably gonna get another volume i can't remember how it ended now that i said that uh but just another one of those where like the dream world art is so freaking cool i dude if you didn't read Slumber, this was an, this was that book that every time it came out, Wednesday Phil and I were like, this should have been a pick of the week because it's so good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and you can, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go back through our history here and find those, and, yeah, find those, those live reviews. streams and get those reviews. Yeah. Um, or you can just buy this book and read it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, AWA Upshot has the Joneses. This is the uh, all of volume one. It's AWA, so this is a ten dollar trade, nine ninety nine technically. Um, this is in the Resistance universe. We've got those people with superpowers, and this is all about um one of those communities where the the next door app gets a little too out of hand, and it's a bunch of people who are like, hey, we need to get rid of all of these people. Let's start a neighborhood watch program that. Uh, just looks for people we don't like and think could be possibly reborns. Yeah. It's great. And it's they're great. kind of the Incredibles in this situation. Yes. Uh, they are 100% exactly the same powers as the Incredibles. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Incredibles, except like these kind of cool, fantastic 40 suits. 
Yeah. Worth it. Worth it. AWA, honestly, if you see AWA on a title, just, just read it. it. It's worth it. And right now, um, the AWA Now magazine has come back as like an app magazine. Upshot Now. Yeah. yeah. They brought it back as a magazine size. Yes. And it's got a lot of articles and a lot of those letters that you see kind of in the back of the books, but it does also have those black and white previews of new series. And they're free. They're free. And we've got them up at the we've front got a giant of the store. Stack of them. Come on by if you guys are a Mailway uh, subscriber and you want something like that. Let us know. We'll throw it in your in your package for you. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, Josh was in the store and he was looking at them and he was like, this is a new thing AWS is doing. I was like, no, they actually started that before they ever put out a mm-hmm. book. Uh, before Archangel even hit the shelves. Like, uh, I've Angel had people 8. bring me those first AWA Upshot magazines and they're like, this could honestly be like, you know, like Darker Image or something like that. Like these books that we mm-hmm. see 20 years later. It's like, this is a publisher that did it so well. I mean... We used to have a drinking game because we used to talk about this publisher so much. And it's like, AWA, we look back, their books were amazing. They made such an impact the way that Image did in 1991, 1992. And we go back and it's like, gee, these magazines were the first appearance of these of these stories. And this is a publishing company that has already sold the rights to almost every single property they have. A uh, hotel, Chariot, a couple of the mm-hmm. other ones have all gotten optioned by, by other mother, studios. Right? I don't think so. That's the one we want to get I thought option. It was. I don't know if it was. Um, and then they made that. And then since those were sold, they have since made a partnership with a production company to just put out a bunch of their stuff. And um, AWA, the, it's AWA Studios because much like Boom, they kind of started in the production company side. So they actually had um, earlier this year they had a Tribeca Film Festival one shot that came out for free as well that was a a preview of all of the books that they have coming out that they've already been pitching like at all these film festivals so um at their like booths so if you are one of those people who's speculating on the concept of like ooh, which of these small presses will go somewhere you should probably be speculating on the one that actually has a studio and a production company and is going to be making everything into something there's an article about it in the new free upshot magazine Old Haunts is the other one. Old Haunts is the other one. Old Haunts That's is the other, other one. one, which is a story about mafia and the ghosts of the people that they killed kind of come back to... Uh, haunt them haunt. as they get to the end of their lives. Yeah. Which would make a really great anything. Anything. It's, anything. Yeah, it's like The Sopranos with ghosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have the trade of that, and that's another $10 one if that interests you. Uh, let us know. Let us yeah. know. We'll come by, check it out, read it here in the shop. Yeah. Take their stools, take seats yeah. in the classroom. Um, one of the things that's been happening is we keep talking about the 90s being a thing um, that everybody's pushing, but we were seeing a lot of people re-release things that Stan Lee worked on. Hmm. And uh, this is Orphans, which is a Stan Lee book that was done at Dynamite. And they put out a hardcover um, for this. And so if you are like a Stan Lee completionist and you need something, there is now a hardcover for Orphans from Stan Lee at Dynamite. And they call it an intergalactic treasure hunt that explodes uh, the alliances universe into the cosmos. So, you know, it's it's cool to see some Stanley stuff that's not Marvel. I'm always into the Stanley stuff that's not Marvel. I think it's super cool to see what other work he did. Yeah. And uh, now you can get it in hardcover. Absolutely. And speaking of, we have a bunch of the Stanley does the DC universe. Which is allegedly coming back without Stanley. Like, Interesting. Yeah, they're going to be doing, uh, but, they're going to continue those stories, essentially. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. And if we do have those in trade paperback currently. Yeah. So if you guys are looking to read those, especially if they're going to bring it back and continue those stories. Yeah. Might as well get on it now. It's super cool. Uh, yeah. Before I go to the last one, uh, Victoria said, did I say that I met Kristen Ritter? I did. Uh, she wrote a novel and we brought her into book people when I worked mm-hmm. there. And so I got to go and uh, meet Kristen Ritter. I remember when you did that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. We it was it was so great. Me and our our friend Jeff, we waited mm-hmm. in line, and uh, we were both freaking out the entire time. Like we're not gonna make it because we're because ha- I actually didn't work the event because I just wanted a chance to meet her. Uh, I later realized that working the event gave me way more opportunity to talk to all the people than when I didn't work the event. But I was like, oh my god, this is incredible. Um, it was so much fun. She was so sweet. She was just. The greatest, most fun human. And she was actually, like, she'd gotten, like, sick, really sick and ended up in the emergency room, like, two days before. And we weren't sure she was going to make it. And she she did. And she was she was a trooper the whole time. It was great. 
and literally is just Jessica Jones. Like, it's so cool to see Jessica Jones in person. I was like, oh my God. I almost took my Jessica Jones comics and was like, I, and, but I was like, I don't want a celebrity to sign right. my comic because it's not a, a celebrity, celebrity, cover, uh, on the cover. And then she bought, she wrote a book. So I have a signed uh, copy of the novel that she wrote. So. Cool. Um, and then lastly, from Trades Out This Week is Something is Killing the Children, Volume 5. This is kind of the prequel to Something's Killing the Children. Honestly, if you haven't read Something's Killing the Children, you could probably just read Volume 5 first, and it might give you a lot of uh, insight mm -hmm. as to what's happening when you read 1 through 4. Yeah, because this is uh, it's Something's Killing the Children, 21 through 25, and it's kind of just like you said, it, it gives you the backstory of, of the world, the universe, uh, and Erica Slaughter's role within that. Yeah, and Erica Slaughter is the hero of the story, as it were. Uh, she is a monster hunter and is killing the monsters that are killing the children. Yes. And it, this is kind of how she comes comes to be, her yes. origin story. Um, and only well, these are fourteen ninety nine for these some of these killing children trades, which Super is super cool. A great way to just jump in. Yeah. Uh, and I think we might actually have all five volumes right now, which is insane. Never, I, I never, I never have all of the volumes at one time, and I think I might actually have all of them. Yeah, uh, which is crazy. I actually have two, and two is the hardest one to have in stock. And right. I think I have multiple copies of issue two, uh, or volume two. So. Yeah. I do not have any copies of issue two. Let me make that no, abundantly no. clear. But so I might. It's a question we get a lot. People come in and say, "Hey, do you have something still in the children back issues?" And we say, "Yeah, absolutely." And we show them. Do you have anything before issue twelve? Right at this point, it's eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, one of the best, and um, uh, we also do have a uh, volume one of House of Slaughter as mm -hmm. well. So if you're, um, if you are gonna get your whole Slaughter verse uh, life on. We have, like I said, one through five of something that's killing the children now, but we also have volume one of House of Slaughter, and we have all the issues of volume two of House of Slaughter, which is not wrapped yet, but it's incredible. So under this roof, we have the entire story. Something's killing the, the slaughter children. Verse. Slaughter verse, right? It's definitely something you should jump into if you're again, if you're looking for something for the spooky season. Yeah, this is something to read. It's very Stranger Things. I was gonna say, and this is for that crowd that like is like, oh, something too scary. I don't want to go too scary. Yeah, this is I don't want gore. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be sleeping with the lights on, but yeah. I just want yeah. something that's kind of spooky and kind of fun and kind of thrillery. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's it. And I, um, you want to go through before I, I'm going to pull up the, what comes out this week, but yeah. do you want to pull while I'm doing that? Do you want to reiterate the big announcement and the upcoming event? Absolutely. If you weren't here and, uh, you didn't hear us in the beginning of the show, we have, uh, children's workshops coming up next Saturday. I'm going to start right there. We've got workshops going on. These are going to be the first workshops we've done here in Bradenton, Florida. Your kids can come by completely free. Uh, make some comics, get to uh, do some character development, figure out how to write comics, um, figure out what goes into a story. It's super fun. We've got a guest educator coming in from Nashville. His name is Zach. He's a wonderful human. And uh, he's going to be working with Shannon, and they're going to be putting on some great workshops for the kiddos. And then on the 29th is Batastic Halloween. Mm -hmm. We've got free comic books, uh, which including amazing titles. You're going to want all of them. Um, there's a Godzilla free comic book. There's a Godzilla. Uh, ah, it's so exciting. And uh, so you can grab a bunch of free comics. Get your face painted. Get your face painted. Here, a spooky Mez, story. Mez, oh, yeah, spooky story time is going to be happening. Mez Games is going to be out with Pokemon cards and things like that. So for the first time ever, Bet City is going to have cards on site, yeah, which I is know. super cool trading card games. Um, and Andrea Moody... The woo -woo. artists of Bunny Mask and Maniac, Maniac of New York and Parasomnia and A Legacy of Violence that came out this week is going to be here in store signing books. I am so excited, so excited. which means that Bunny Mask will probably make an appearance. If you guys have followed me on Twitter, I dress as Bunny Mask often. Very excited. Very excited. I, we're trying to get you to. I don't want to tell anybody yet. All right. All right. All right. There's things, there's things in the works. Maybe I might get too embarrassed. I'm not gonna be able to dress as Bunny Mask. Well, I'll wear Bunny I want to call Andrea and be like, "I dress as Bunny Mask." Is that okay? Is it gonna make you feel weird <laughs> if someone's dressed as Bunny Mask here? I don't think so. He's he's seen it. He's liked your. He shared. He's, tweets. He's he shared knows. my tweet. 
Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. He's like, oh, you're that guy. You're that guy. I wouldn't have agreed to come if I'd have known you were that guy. <laughs> um, no, Andrea's art is some of the coolest art that's out right now in current comic books, and we're so thrilled that he's going to be here signing books. So that's October 29th, and it's all for free. Yes. Total free event. Come out, hang you out. You will have, you. there might be sign fees and stuff for different parts of yeah. An- Andrea, but yeah, the event absolutely. But the is event free. is free. Yeah. And are you doing a costume contest? We are. We're going to have a costume contest for adults and then a separate one for kiddos. Uh, and we're calling for it a costume. costume parade for kids because all the kids will get something special. Awesome. Um, yeah. I, mean, I will never. It's not a competition for kids. No. Honestly. It's no. not even a competition for adults. We're all here to have fun. But I know adults like to really spend time on their costumes. Uh, and want to have that moment, but yes, there, so there will be a uh, costume uh, moments for everybody. So if you are a kiddo and you come, you're getting an ex- in a costume, you're getting an extra special prize. If you um, are an adult uh, and you come in costume, super fantastic. You might get a prize. All the times will be announced for everything specifically. Uh, we are waiting to finalize our times with Andrea, and then we'll build everything else out around that. Yeah, absolutely. We're super excited about the whole thing. It's going to be a great way for everybody to spend Halloween in town and we hope you can make it there. Yes. Um, and then we got some new books. Daniel said him and his family will definitely be here. Ooh. Yes. Um, we've got some books coming out this week. Nightwing 97 is out this week. We've got Moon Knight issue 16, Thor issue 28, uh, Batman Superman's World Finest, which I know everybody's been loving. Issue 8 is coming out this week. Avengers, X-Force, a lot of Judgment Day tie-ins coming out. Darth Vader, issue 28 is out. Batman the Night, issue 10, also written by Chip Zdarsky, also a Batman title, not in any way connected to Chip Zdarsky's main Batman title. Uh, Flashpoint Beyond is back with issue 6, Catwoman issue 48. Carnage is out for issue 7, Dark Crisis, Young Justice, Gunslinger Spawn. What? Whoa. That's not... Uh, I was like, I'm being played off like the Oscars. That's weird. I, like, opened it to play and it, and it just, like, started playing. It just started right. it. Yeah, yeah, no. Iron Man issue 24. Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man issue 1 is finally out. For the last six months, I have had people asking me when they will get their Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man because it has been delayed so many times. It is now. Uh, Batman, One Bad Day. The Penguin is out. Predator is back with issue 3. Midnight Suns is finally out with his issue 2. Uh, Deadly Class still going, issue 56. I'm going to switch to some of these indies. Uh, Silver Coin, issue 15. Aquaman Andromeda, issue 3 is finally out. Ooh. That feels like forever. Uh, Public Domain, issue 5 is out. Bone Orchard Mythos, 10,000 Black Feathers, issue 2 is finally out. Also oh, another man. one that feels like it's been forever. Miracle Man, uh, The Silver Age, issue 1 is out. Ooh. Neil Gaiman back on Miracle Man. Um... Uh, We've got Win the Throne in the Sky, issue three. Death Dealer from Frank Fazetta's uh, Legacy, issue six is out. Above Snakes, issue four. Uh, Sacrament, issue three, which I'm very excited about. That is a book I love. Mindset, which is one of my picks all the time in the store, issue four is out. Uh, Shaolin, Cowboy, Cruel to Be Kin, issue six. Uh, Help Me in Love, issue one. Very excited to announce volume two of Eve starts this week. Uh, if you are an Eve fan, it is back. I am so excited. True Kill, issue three. Deadliest Bouquet, issue three. Castle Full of Blackbirds, issue two. Um, Mad Balls versus Garbage Trail Kids, issue four. Parasomnia, volume two. The Dreaming God, issue three, is out. Crashing, issue two. Forever Forward, issue two. Uh, Phantasmagoria, issue two from Black Caravan is finally out again. I'm Super so cool. excited. Uh, the Marked has a Halloween special. We haven't seen anything from The Marked in yeah. uh, two years, maybe. Uh, Agent of World, issue three, finally out. Dead Kingdom from Red 5 is launching this week. Uh, Hyper Aware from Source Point. Uh oh my gosh, there's so many. Fear of the Fun House, that's your other Archie one you were that's, talking about. Yeah, yeah, Fear the Fun House. Um Alpha Beta is launches this week, which is Whatnots comic. Um, their first book on their publishing line. Uh As of the Barbed issue two is out. Uh Code 45 issue four, which is a book that uh Wednesday Phil and I love so much. Um and Heaven's Rejects issue two is out this week. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Destiny New York has a Halloween special out this oh. week. Tiger's Tongue out this week with issue four. There are so many comics. Oh my gosh, I can't keep doing this all day. It's still going. There's it's, Seriously. it's an incredible week for comics. This week was so light, and next week is going to be huge. I I cannot wait. And, um, I uh, hope Zach's ready to read because you said Zach was going to be on the live stream with me next week. I mean, possibly. maybe, maybe we'll uh, see. We'll see. 
Uh, I don't think he knows that yet. He doesn't. I, I think I, so, I... Well, he might. I text him that he was, but then we started the show, so I don't know if he said no. So... <laughs> Zach, our guest educator, who's going to be in town. Might, um, might be on the stream next maybe week. Maybe he'll be on the stream we'll next find week. Out. We'll see. But, you know, either way. Either way. It'll be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great week for comics, and we are going to tell you all about them next Sunday at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, right here as we wind down your weekend. But if you want to get a head start and beat us to them, you can pick them up anytime starting Wednesday with New Comic Book Day here at Bat City or your LCS, wherever that may be. Uh, make sure you shop local, shop often, and support comic book stores. Yeah. And uh, most importantly, uh, happy reading this week. Absolutely. Happy birthday Wednesday, Phil. What, what? And Woo-hoo. happy birthday, Cam. Happy birthday, Cam. Because we love you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.